Thank you so much for joining us for your Ring of Honor and Impact post show. We appreciate you tuning in. It is May 4th. Mm -hmm. We are at the, we think last, at least last for now, of the arena shows. We're headed back to the studio. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about tonight's episode, though. This was, I think, a stronger one than the past couple weeks, so I'll take it. But we're going to talk to Reg all about it. Yep. And if you want to get your question or statement read on air, get in those super chats, get in those humper chats at humperchats.com. And hey, before we dive into ROH, we are going to remind you to subscribe to Fightful Select because All Elite Wrestling had its biggest signing to date, okay? In history, possibly. You can take your CM Punk drama, you can take your WWE sales, and you can shove them up your butt, all right? Will Washington is all elite. Go to FightfulSelect.com and read the story there. But seriously, people are really interested in the CM Punk drama. Learn yeah, also. <laughs> yeah, learn, learn about it all. Learn about it all. You can also catch me reviewing, uh, what is this weekend? Backlash. Yep. <laughs> Backlash. There's a big show possibly in Puerto Rico. I don't know. In Puerto Rico, which is mm -hmm. very cool to get to see Zelina and Damian yeah. Priest and all of these incredible talents get to perform in Puerto Rico, but I'll be behind the totally. paywall doing the post show with Alex Pulowski. That's Saturday, and... right? This is a Saturday show this week. Yes. Show. Sorry. Saturday. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That's where my head's at. It's been yes. a minute. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I get Lord, it. Lord, dear mm -hmm. Lord. But we thank you so much for joining us. Reg, how are you doing? It's your first Fightful week, sons. Will we had a day after dynamite tonight? No, you've got exciting stuff still cooking. You are still yes. steamrolling ahead. Do yes. like an early, like, I'm here to plug my shit, but I'm not plugging my shit, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, there's some pots cooking, there's some things going. Uh, of course, Grapsity is on its way. We're continuing. Bill and I uh, had asked Grapsity earlier, got a whole bunch of questions, had a great time. Um, yeah, but this there's so many other things that are great. Music is starting to pop up again, and eventually they're going to one day uh, fight forever is going to exist in the real universe. <laughs> People are going to actually be able to turn on their PlayStations and Xboxes and press play and hear my songs. When that date will ever happen, Kate, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I don't know anything about video game world. Like, it's just mm -hmm. not my not my thing. Is my understanding though is they're doing more of a style where you like build a base and you release it and you kind of keep updating that version rather than a release every yeah. okay, cool. Totally. Makes sense, it's taken a while. And I'm sure actually buying ROH has probably played into some of the delays because they have this whole catalog now of yeah. Kevin Steed and El Generico and Tyler Black and all these right. people that you couldn't play before. So and then people get confused because they like WWE game comes out every single year, but they've been going off of a base that's been going for 20 years. They could keep sure. put out games every year. The AW games is legit from scratch. Like they started from day one, like, all right, start drawing. And then they, they went from there. They didn't have a base to build off. So like <laughs> it's going to take longer. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be all kinds of things. We'd rather it take longer than them put out the game and then everybody's just like, this is the worst game I ever played in history. Why'd they put this junk out? Exactly. You know exactly. I personally love seeing the glitches. Like <laughs> when I think it was the 2K one that had all those glitches where it was like somebody would go through the ring mat, like the, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the actual floor was great. Yeah. Uh, those ones crack me up, but that's because I don't play it. So I don't get frustrated. I just watch little clips and it makes me laugh. There you go. So, Hoping that fight for what forever is going to be awesome. Speaking of awesome, we got some mm -hmm. champions back on our show today, which made me very happy. We got the finally of Robbie Eagles. We got a lot of mm -hmm. good stuff tonight. I was, was tight. much happier this week than yeah, I was pretty the good past show. two weeks. But Except also very happy for them to to head back to the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's dive in mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> We started with a pure rules match, which just, mm -hmm. it just warms my heart whenever we do that between yep. Rocky Romero and Lee Moriarty. A lot of really good stuff here. I just love pure matches and I loved the way that the closed fist was being taunted a lot in this. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, the way people play with pure rules when they're doing it the right way. There's nothing more fun for me as a fan, but Romero getting the win with the arm bar. He tried to lock it in like a few times in this match. I loved the way he was kind of like, no, 
I'm gonna win with it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I like it when people are like, "No, it's my move. I'm gonna I'm gonna win with this." Yeah. And the other times before, just my my climb up the mountain, man. But mm-hmm. really, really fun stuff. Rocky is so good at so many things in wrestling. Like it blows my mind that he's a great commentator. Has his mm-hmm. hand obviously in booking. Really good in the ring too. The snapmare that we saw tonight, the tornado DDT that we saw tonight, focuses in on Rocky because what the hell else do you even say about Lee Moriarty, man? This guy mm-hmm. is incredible. Reg, what did you think of this match? Uh, I love the finish, how they used uh, Lee Moriarty was finally out of rope breaks because he ran out of them earlier in the match. And he got to the ropes to be able to be broken up. But since he was out of rope breaks, couldn't break it. And Rocky ended up getting the victory. That was great. We haven't seen too many of these pure rule matches where the pure rules and the rope breaks thing really come into the finish. So it was great for them to emphasize that. This is super fun. Rocky Romero is, for a long time, been one of the best wrestlers that there are. And he, you know, he's played so much of the back ro- backstage role. You kind of forget that he can do things like this. And then Lee's in there. And so they had the match last week, and they did some callbacks to last week, and they used what they did last week to, to implement and to bring into the finish here. A lot of super fun stuff there. Uh, great pure wrestling match, submissions, uh, locks and holds and reversals, like everything you could expect. Really good opener here. And like I was saying a little bit ago, that crowd, though, is just, whew, ah, there's probably like, there's probably more people in the chat here than we're at the show to watch. <laughs> I them. think there are <laughs> more people tuning in than stuck around for this. But. <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> So you know what? I really liked this match and the pacing I thought was great. But mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm watching the show and they're like, we're starting with the pure rules, man. I'm, I'm out. Like, Bro. See you guys later. <laughs> nice knowing you. Thanks. Am, Thanks for I the show, hurt. Tony Khan. I'm about to head to my car. What are you talking Appreciate about? Appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for the additional free wrestling, but no thanks. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> that the sequencing of the show was very weird. Like mm-hmm. Claudio being in the middle of it. I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> but I had like breaks, walked past the screen a little bit and they said that match. And I thought they had said main event. And I was like, man, this is the shortest show ever. But they were like, no, Claudio's <laughs> just in this place right here. And I was like, okay. Thank weird. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Not another like 24 minute episode. With I a, know. Right. Like 2006 match. <laughs> mm-hmm. or whatever, but. You never know. Really, really good stuff here. I love your rules, so this is for me. But to your point, it was really nice to see them come into play here. I just wanted to mm. circle back on that because I'm glad you brought it up. Doesn't always come into play in the ending. Always there from a strategic standpoint. Loved it mm. playing into the finish here, realistically. If you're newer to ROH and still like getting the vibe of pure rules, this is kind mm. of a, a fun one to, to wrap your head around because those rules yep. came into play a lot today. Reg. Mm-hmm. If I asked you to name someone better than Athena, you couldn't do it. Like, <laughs> I'd have to like get a, I have to like get a bunch of books. I have to go to the library, find a bunch of books, look at Google, uh, put on like a hat and like a little lamp, and just sit for hours and like draw maps, and then end up being like, nah, I couldn't find it, Kate. It's it would Athena. be so much effort and time, mm-hmm. and to come up with no answer here. Holy like, cow! Athena mm-hmm. versus uh, Angelica Risk, I believe, yep. was her name. I'm, I'm not as familiar with her, but I liked mm-hmm. what I saw of her tonight. I look forward to learning more about her. Um, mm-hmm. But, man, this is just Athena's wheelhouse right here, man. <laughs> she wins with a crossface that scared the ref out of the ring. My God. Really, really, really fun. Uh, the kicks to the face, man, just look painful. Her doing the skyfall was one of the best skyfalls I've ever seen. No offense to Sky Blue, but boy, Sorry. oh boy, in her hands, it looks real damn good. Mm-hmm. Athena just continues to be on this role where it's it's so perfect for ROH because things are so logically built. Like this was for the mm-hmm. title tonight. We knew what was yep. gonna happen, but it's for the title. Like it mm-hmm. feels good to have consequences like that. Yep. And also to see her bring this kind of brutality to Ring of Honor is just like a really fun kind of innately built tension because she is very good from an in-ring technical perspective, but the brutality just makes her stand out so much to me. Mm-hmm. And for a division 
that is really unestablished, this title reign, you say it every week, MVP, like, it's really, really anchoring not just the women's division, but the entire show, Reg. Yeah, uh, Athena, this is Athena's show right here. And we see it every single week. She comes in here, she destroys somebody's life, and she smiles about it the entire time. She's amazing. She's on fire. I think Angelica Risk is uh, was part of the Nightmare family. She has like some connections out there, factory oh, okay. or family or one of those things. So shout out to her. She looked great. But anybody in this position with Athena on this Ring of Honor show is going to get beat up and is going to get beat up bad. Uh, I just don't like the sky blue thing. I just still can't. I'm not 100% in. I'm like, okay, I know Sky's the number one contender and that's what we're leading to and i like this promo uh, that she had uh later here in the show but it's like okay then who's next what's going on after this because i know athena is going to destroy sky blue and we're going to be moving on to the next person i agree i feel like i'm with you as far as like i just feel like the story calls for athena to ruin her and i think they're going to mm -hmm. give it an honest sincere match which they probably should in retrospect yeah. but like I feel like the story calls for her to just get eaten alive. Just, wreck her, just destroy her. All you see is just Sky Blue's boots left in the ring. And that's just it, the ring. her poor little hat, just <laughs> inside out. <laughs> inside her out. Poor back little backwards hat. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, poor Sky mm -hmm. Blue. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I do get the story of like you have this brutal ass kicker champion and sky blue having this kind of like very underdog persona about her but yeah. it feel it does feel early to me it feels like mm -hmm. the timing might not be perfect for this but we're gonna get into her promos later because holy mm -hmm. hell mm -hmm. she did some work tonight to try and grab us with this yep. uh, i'm looking forward to it but i'm also looking forward to seeing some more tent poles of roh in the women's division especially get get kind of solidified as we get deeper into things I have a little bit more patience until collision is underway. Mm -hmm. I'll say that mm -hmm. much. Like I felt this way with triple H where I was like, I will give him through a rumble season to WrestleMania season before I make yeah. future judgments. I kind of feel like right now with all in all out forbidden door, all these things coming up and a new show launching. I'm like, I will give some breathing room to ROH, but the clarity couldn't come fast enough as far as I could tell. Like I, I, I want it. <laughs> mm -hmm. but great stuff from athena here man it just mm -hmm. keeps rolling down the mountain and speaking of mountains we got a mountain of a man in samoa joe Very yes happy to see him back thank god oh. it's been so long <laughs> my tv slash streaming champion <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this was a whole bunch of fun christopher daniels yes. Looked really good in this, man. The, mm -hmm. the fact that he has the work rate he does at his age is pretty impressive. But mm -hmm. And everybody calls me an ageist because I'm so sick of Jeff Jarrett. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to see <laughs> Billy God on my TV. No offense to them. It's not what I need in my wrestling. But like That's Christopher fair. Daniels in the spot, a really nice innate story built in here. We get Samoa Joe with the W as God intended, though. Joe mm -hmm. winning with the muscle buster to retain his title. One thing that always impresses me about Samoa Joe and it's the same with Miro they have this unbelievable ability to very realistically sell like it's not the cartoonish this guy's so much younger than me oversell and it's not a no sell like Sting coming up mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's really really impressive to me that a guy of his size and in a story where it was kind of like CD was throwing some offense his way and he was like mm -hmm. nah <laughs> not mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. uh, really 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 refreshing to see and uh yeah it was just dudes just go flying into him and if he's not walking yeah. away from him he's stopping him so i don't know exactly. what to tell you but the mm -hmm. ability to sell that is always something that's so impressive to me uh but what did you think of this match uh this was awesome i love the story that they told they said that this was like the 93rd match or, or something that they've been a part of together which is wow, like wow i didn't catch that insane. yeah they said that that They've like, yeah, they've wrestled 92 times. This is the 93rd time they've ever wrestled in a match together. And I'm like, that's craziness for two guys to be involved in so many. And we've seen, you know, uh, the many epic matches. Uh, I consider their match with AJ Styles and uh, sure. Impact 
greatest triple threat match of all time. Like these guys are incredible. And so to see that here on display again, you never thought they even brought that up in commentary. They're like, we had this, the last time that they wrestled was in 2015. And we thought that was the last time we'd ever see Samoa Joe in ring of honor. And here's ring of honor is again with Samoa Joe as the, the TV champ and against Christopher Daniels, they get to call back spots. They get to, they could do this match blindfolded in their sleep uh, after 93 times. They know each other. They know every single move every ch- each other's done. They've been in every single aspect of match they ever could be. Just another amazing display. Samoa Joe is so fucking cool, man. I don't he's know how, quite, like, what? He's just so cool. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. That's pretty much it. It's like, so when you cool. see him, you're just like, when he comes out for his entrance, you're like, damn, this guy's cool. And then he gets in the ring and he's so nonchalant. Then the bell rings and he just doesn't care. He's either, like you said, he's either moving out of the way or staying in the way and destroying you. It's like, which one do you want? Like, either way, you're dead. And he's just the fucking man shout out to small joe twisted metal just kept yeah. the trailer so he's uh out here in these streets i'm sure it's gonna be a very interesting year for Samoa joe because you know when if if you're a part of a what i'm assuming is gonna be a very successful tv show it's like lit after that yeah oh my gosh and the aesthetic i just saw like some of the photos that had gotten posted so cool just mm-hmm. like what a what an awesome thing to be able to do after so much time of being in this really ambiguous place of being released mm-hmm. and then resigning yep. and shelved and all this back and forth, like always happy to see wrestlers doing what they want to do. And it's so cool because they're 93rd time crossing paths of in some sort. Mm-hmm. It's just wild wrestling right now. Like Trinity's an impact. They're going to talk about that later on this very stream. What? She's giving her first promo tonight. So that's very, very cool. I can't wait to hear about that. Um, yeah, if you had told me three years ago, <laughs> Sasha Banks then would be in Japan. That wasn't even a thing. There wasn't like, a women's what? division there. Like You'd be aware and doing God, what? No, God. no, you're lying. No. Yeah, yeah, it's a really healthy and fun like, time. She won us. the women's, she's going to win the women's championship in New Japan. You'd be like, what? I'd be like, that doesn't <laughs> exist. Like, oh, cool. I won the unicorn and jelly bean and lemonade title like, <laughs> in my local indie. Like, that wasn't a thing. Right. Thing. It would sound like um, like a generator made that up. Yeah. Be like Sasha Banks mm-hmm. is now Mercedes Monet exactly. and she's in New that Japan. AI shit. Living. Here we go again with the AI shit. <laughs> <laughs> Chat GTP shit. That's, That's it. it. All right. That's it. We've got some mm-hmm. super chats and humper chats coming in. Thank you guys for the support. We thank you, Bridget. For this chat and relatable, y'all are awesome. I've been having mm-hmm. a bad week, and y'all are making me laugh. Thank you, thank you so much for the support. Yeah, it's hopefully, been things get long. better, Bridget. Yeah, it's been, you it's know, it's been a long one. It's been yeah. a long one, but the weekend is on the horizon. We had great wrestling tonight. There's more around the corner. Appreciate your support. That was a very backlash. Generous... That's right, backlash. <laughs> all sorts of stuff going on. I know you'll be watching intently. Uh, Shane Monster. <laughs> Said, hey, missed last week because I was watching the second worst draft of last week. <laughs> nah, I feel you, shame. <laughs> Man, mm-hmm. Claudio knee striking Eagles in total mm. with all of them. Um, final mm-hmm. boss, we are mm-hmm. going to talk about that. We about to talk that about that. <laughs> yes. We will be talking about that shortly. Back to mm-hmm. Athena, our standby. With the work mm-hmm. Athena has been pulling off, I hope she gets in a match or defense for championship at Forbidden Door. Same. One of the big shows, at least. Yeah. Um, you got two kind of super shows coming up. Mm-hmm. It would be really, really nice to see that because this has been an unbelievable rain. And I don't feel like <clears throat> this might just be wildly hypocritical of me because I've been complaining about brand clarity <laughs> for a really long time. But I feel like she could do some work on AEW right now and not drop the title. Like if it's a dream match or something, like if it's with Mercedes or if. Mm -hmm. impact's gonna get involved in this nonsense it's with trend or or whatever Mm -hmm. like i feel like if there's a proper challenge that would creatively make sense because she's been built to be so dominant do you have any thoughts on who athena should face where on on maybe a bigger stage uh yeah i'm with the uh the forbidden door and trinity i think that'd be great but um pretty much like go down the list of the the stardoms or tjpw wrestlers and you gotta hear like 
uh, her and Julia would be like insane. Like yeah. her and Mayu would be crazy. Like there's so many great opponents for her out there. Um, in America, and like even in her own company, I think with uh, we've talked many times about the match with Jamie Hader would just like yeah. destroy all of our lives. There's Ruby Soho there too. There's like a bunch of great talented women in the same locker room as her. So hopefully she needs to either be on that or the All In show um, because she deserves to be rewarded for the great work that she's been doing as the ring of honor champion. So I agree. And I also think of some of the injured women's talent. I don't know what the returns are. This is not, not speculating, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but Layla Hirsch versus her, I think could be mm -hmm. really fun from what I remember mm -hmm. of her on the indies and her time in AEW so far. Mm -hmm. Sarita D is a fun match with just about anybody. Yeah. There's a lot of good talent in the, in the, Pool that's unavailable right now and my god chris statlander i don't know if you saw her posting but she is more swole than anybody holy i definitely saw her, her posting shirts. she looks great she looks amazing she, she looks like she can rip her head off and where's red velvet at because red velvet and athena yeah. would be a pretty dope match too i haven't seen her in a while Kira hogan mm. anybody takers love it would love it ryan sullivan AEW Dark Enthusiast, which I can't mm -hmm. say about a lot of people, but he was always mm -hmm. live tweeting for us at Mark Order Pod about it, saying, mm -hmm. did Dark have to die so ROH could live? Uh, our own moderator, Luis, answered that and said, yes, because honor is real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't have a better answer uh, for you. I don't that. believe that uh, oh my God. they had to die because of Ring of Honor. I think it, they, they had to die because of other activities i think ring of honor is just a separate entity but hopefully that the the spirit of that can kind of live on but more in the the vein of ring of honor and less in the vein of that definitely definitely i think there's there's a lot of it's almost like wrestlenomics only this is under the same brand like mm -hmm. there's with wrestling we've seen it cycle to the point where it's if somebody gets a major deal like Fox, mm. then other companies like Warner are willing to take risks on the idea of professional wrestling. And it has this wonderful trickle down effect. Right. Then it becomes oversaturated and people kind of close up shop a little bit. I feel like if you've got collision is two hours, dynamite is two hours, rampage, you're already at five hours right there. You've got mm -hmm. ROH, which is going to be, we'll say six and a half hours mm -hmm. doing both darks is a lot. So it's a lot. It's a lot to do, but things come and they go. We'll see if anything reappears, but uh, Ryan held his own funeral to Dark on uh, our yeah. <laughs> podcast yesterday, so shout out to him for that. <sighs> Autoclave said in a Humphrey chat that carried over from Ask Rhapsody saying, nothing to read aloud, just a big thank you to Reg and Phil for everything. Well, that's a Oh, thank chat. you. Appreciate Sorry that. Sorry they missed that one, but a very, mm -hmm. very kind message to send mm -hmm. in. That's awesome. So we get to our main event as the third match in the show. Fourth match <laughs> of the show. Yes. <laughs> what is this doing here? Mm -hmm. Claudio versus Robbie Eagles, who's no joke. And, this and it was a tight ass match, match, too. Why is it, it was right so here? Good. I was like, what are we doing with this? The turn of the hour. I guess they wanted the remaining people to see it before everybody mm -hmm. packed up and went home. Right. Uh, but a really, really, really fun match. Robbie Eagles is a, a fantastic talent haven't seen him worth checking out more of his matches but you got a really nice dose of it tonight my notes yep. just say the fuck was this doing here uh, <laughs> <laughs> a fun little story for something that didn't really have a story going into it either uh really loved the swing getting countered into a submission mm -hmm. spot like yep. I've loved that the swing isn't coming out as much because that's a fan favorite thing and heel Claudio shouldn't give the people what they want. That's not mm -mm. what he's about. But it's mm -mm. also a pretty brutal move. It also so fucks you, people up. It also fucks people <laughs> up. So when you bust it out in doses like this, it kind of makes him look like I had to go back to the well mm -hmm. in order to put this guy away, hopefully, and then countering it with a submission is just a, a really, really fun idea. Uh, but... Castagnoli winning here uh, with a really, really nice power bomb, a straight jacket power bomb, I think. Yeah. After a, a couple of attempts from Eagles and a few pitting combinations, but this was a really, really fun match. I have mm. no idea what it was doing <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes into it, especially for a world title match, but. 
this was great. I thought Robbie Eagles looked great. I am ready for a story for my world champion, but yeah. from what I saw tonight, no complaints. Yeah. Uh, I guess he has one going on on Wednesday nights with the, the elite is the story that they're telling, but this is awesome. Robbie Eagles look cool. Was this his debut? I don't know if he's been in, I don't think he's been in ring of honor before, but this match is like one of them badass Claudio specialties. They brought it up in commentary that Claudio usually has trouble with the faster guys just because they be whipping and zipping around. But every time that he catches them, they get destroyed, and there was a lot of times where he caught Robbie Eagles and destroyed him. There was a lot of cool counters. Robbie Eagles' uh, story felt like he really studied Claudio, really knew what was going to happen going into this match. So a lot of Claudio's big spots he had countered already. But Claudio has – Claudio's one wrestler that if you know him throughout his years, um, he has so many tools in his arsenal that he still hasn't used. We've been watching this guy for like – 15 years and there's still like spots and things and all these crazy moments that he saves i don't know what he's saving them for he's saving them for some incredible big moments that'll still blow everybody's brains out so it's never he's never caught off guard by any wrestler because he knows the counter to every spot he knows how to finish you with all kind of different ways and the way that he did with the knees and the ricola bomb tonight was just Ooh. beautiful just brutal and but robbie eagles looked really great um i love to see more of him love to see some of his crew out here i love the anytime that they mix in new japan type talent here so this was uh super dope especially being right here smack dab in the middle because anytime it's in the middle you're probably like oh, it could be a squash since they're putting it on so early but it wasn't a squash no it was a made event worthy match certainly mm -hmm. so uh but really really good match i do want to call out how great Capri Sydney and are pretty much every week, but yep. in stuff like this, giving that background information, talking about the New Japan crossover and the stable he mm -hmm. came from and all this was really, really um, effortlessly injected into the match, which is really uh, not as easy as it looks, I think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, a lot of announcers are not trying because right. there's a lot of announcers that are really bad at that, to be honest, but... Very Some love true. from Mike from Indeed. Thanks, Mike from Indeed. Hey. Check it out on Fightful Overbooked. But happy ROH mm -hmm. Day. Happy ROH Day to you, Mike. You two are amazing. Yes. Thank you. We mm -hmm. are. Uh, <laughs> hope you're having a yes. wonderful day. Eh. Obligatory <laughs> shout out in advance to Cresta and Joel. Eh. <laughs> All Star Thursday cast. Cresta and Joel are great. She is corporate Cresta right now. She is the jabroni of Fightful. Mm -hmm. She's hysterical. You guys are in for a yeah. treat. And there's a lot of stuff happening in Impact right now. It's a mm -hmm. lot of momentum. You had Gresham versus Mike Bailey. You had Trinity mm -hmm. speaking tonight. A lot of really, really, really good, um, just like healthy stuff happening in pro wrestling. Don't let, don't outmark yourself into. No, definitely not. Yourself. Your marks. Robbie Eagles versus Claudio is a match. I need part two. I wouldn't hate him running it back. I also loved that Claudio. I think he did. He yell first gear. <laughs> at the end of this like he didn't even get into second gear no I that's would... real though that's the real thing about claudio is like <laughs> that's just first gear like like i said he still has a whole bunch in his arsenal that we've never seen we've never seen claudio in fourth gear we've seen him in like second maybe at most but like sure. this guy's an ex exceptional athlete when they say that it's not when they're like claudio's one of the be best athletes in the, like, the company it's, like, nah, he it's really... real <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really is. <laughs> he really True. is. Uh, I am intrigued to see where things go with him. I really miss seeing Josh Woods on my screen. I really need mm. a, a feud with Claudio and Josh Woods. I like it. I think longer term to catch the winning would be super fun, but they've obviously got a lot going on right now. So but they could start telling that story over here in Ring of Honor because they got the other sides going on over there. So. I wouldn't be mad about it. <laughs> that match at, uh, there's not a, no offense to any of the wrestlers on it, but they don't really try with Battle of the Belts so much. Mm -hmm. There's been some good matches there, but one of the most standout matches that they've ever done on Battle of the Belts to me was Claudio versus Takeshita. And mm -hmm. I was like, 
put a pin in it, come back because that mm -hmm. one, it, we're not done. We're not done. There's a lot more juice to be having. Interested that. to see uh, moving forward if they'll still have Battle of the Belts now that we have Collision reportedly still. I don't know if it's been announced or real, but yeah. So, like, are they still going to do Battle of the Belts because they're filling out two more hours a week on the show or are we gonna still get these bullshit shows that don't matter to anybody <laughs> that's a good question i am intrigued to see and we might never know until we just watch what's given to us but mm -hmm. um kind of the details of what this new deal entails or maybe you can just text your best friend will washington yeah uh, no, no, I'm just leave, kidding. leave me out of this leave me out of this <laughs> <laughs> It's like they're all his decisions, man. I was giving That's him credit, true. blaming him for That's everything true. on Dynamite last Every night. Every time you guys are pissed, at Will Washington, you at did Will this Washington. to us. I was like, why did, why did Will age in a match with like? I'm about to be Robinson. complaining about Ring of Honor to him now. I'm like, hey, yo, what's up? What the hell happened? What's, what's going on? on here? Why did you do this? <laughs> He's going to block me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be well deserved. I'm not even going to be mad about it. Yeah, there's some where I'm like, I get it. I mm -hmm. I know myself, you know. Earned it. Listen, mm -hmm. trolling can get you in all sorts of trouble. So yeah, uh, we will move mm -hmm. along to. Oh, thank you, Kylie, for you gotta love just like a good purple heart emoji. Appreciate thank you for that. sending that in. You're the mm -hmm. best. We'll pull it up on the screen so everyone can see. <laughs> Who doesn't love it? It kind of goes there with our little is. background. We're like there some is. '90s Lisa Frank trip right now, man. Mm -hmm. This is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for sending that in we appreciate the support we move along to the best friends Darius Martin action and ready for some reason and Stu Grayson <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to pop myself you guys OGK mm -hmm. Ari Davari, Josh Woods and Tony Nice. OGK coming in to whoop that ass as Luis yep. put in our header here mm -hmm. This was a little bit weird. Nothing like egregiously bad, I wouldn't say, but Grayson and Andretti prepare for the win. The righteous come out to distract them. They weren't anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. And the way the brawl unfolded felt very off to me. Like it happened at the wrong time or something. This mm -hmm. just felt kind of stilted. But I'm intrigued mm -hmm. to see where the story goes. But this is, again like one of those things where i'm like what are best friends doing down here <laughs> like what are we, what are we doing with that <laughs> very happy to see i really like the varsity athletes a lot like i I just said how much i love josh woods and i really mm. like tony niece um but what did you think of our, our little 10 man tag here it was it was like why is this happening because you guys <laughs> you, you got i like to see a whole a whole bunch of people that are in this match i like them very cool uh, ogk Darius, um, all these people, very fun. But it's like, why? I mean, they they did some of the fun multi man match spots, like a superplex onto the crowd, or like everybody gets their shit in the middle. My least favorite multi man spot. Oh, now my <laughs> turn to hit. Then the next guy comes in and hits his spot. Then a super kick, and then this guy comes in and hits a suplex. I hate that shit so much. And they do it every multi man match, and it's always dumb because you just see the other guys waiting on the apron. Oh, it's my turn. I'm gonna run in, run in while your other guys Hilton, and then you guys can hit a double team move, and maybe you'll get the finish. The Instead of watching on the apron like King. a little fucking nerd, or, yes, a spot flu King is saying spots. Some of them are dumb. Specifically <laughs> this <one. laughs> All right, you know what? Respect. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But Fair yeah, enough. yeah, this uh, this uh, just too many. Just like, just felt like a match for for a match. Sometimes it's just too many people. Like, <laughs> why, are, why are we watching ten people on this show in the ring at the cool. same time? Come on! Oh, you there guys. were more men in the ring than were left watching in the crowd at this point. Come on! Seriously, now. if there's <sighs> more people in at ringside, something's going wrong here. Yeah, this was a little weird, and mm -hmm. this is not actually Andretti's fault. But we already talked about it being kind of weird that he's paired with Darius, and like also kind of weird that he like. Got two up on Chris Jericho, and they're like, "Well, all right." <laughs> like, where did the 
<laughs> Good job, kid. Totally See you later. <laughs> and Jericho's like, I was mad about it, but I have moved on. I'm like, Jericho doesn't move on from anything for like 10 years. Jericho months. moved on. If Jericho moved on, that's crazy. That means <laughs> like nobody cares because like, he never moves on. Everybody's like, oh, Action Andretti was a person one time. Have fun over there, kid. Yeah, it was. I, I loved the. The way they brought him in, I thought that was such a productive use of Jericho. And I mm-hmm. felt like, oh, he's doing all the sneaky stuff to get one up on Jericho. We're going to lead to a blow off. And they were like, mm, not so much. So. No blow offs. That's it. We'll move yeah. along. <laughs> move <laughs> along. <laughs> to Richard Donis and Preston Vance, the mm-hmm. formerly masked, also formerly unmasked yeah. <laughs> Preston mm-hmm. Vance. Dangerous dog. <laughs> That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. He's very realistic about the fact that sometimes your mask comes off. Mm-hmm. This was a, a perfectly fine little match. That I don't think there was a ton here. A nice slingshot uh, German suplex from Vance, though, which looked really good. I think they're trying to build Preston Vance up. We're going to talk about Brian Cage later, too, but I'm like, all right. Are you in a stable or not? Are you a solo competitor or not? Are you a six-man champion later or not? Like... Mm. Uh, but I think Preston Vance being built as an individual, whether he's participating in a stable or not, is still a good thing. This is perfectly suitable. I, I didn't feel like there was anything major to call out, but Richard Donis looked good, uh, and Preston Vance looked good, so no complaints there. Mm-hmm. Pretty okay. This run of the mill, uh, let Preston Vance get his shit off. I don't know if I've ever noticed that Preston Vance theme is like. A remix of a Jay-Z song, which I thought was pretty cool out here today. Shout out to Preston Vance for that really cool theme. Um, But if we're going to see anybody from Preston Vance crew, I want to see Roosh out here because if we're building contenders, that's the contender I want to build. But if they're building Preston Vance up to be maybe uh, a contender for Samoa Joe, I don't know if they will, Two Hills or uh, something else, I wouldn't be super mad at it. I like the way that he has been uh, elevating himself the last couple months since joining up with Roosh and gang. So, you know, it was fine. Agreed. I selfishly want to see Roosh and everything. So yes. I can't, <laughs> can't disagree with you on that at all. Mm-hmm. But I think it's, you know, you, you highlighted something that I realized I didn't even think might be handicapping things a little bit. In addition to champions not being around, you do have two heel champions at your most prominent titles. Yep. You got hit six man titles. Mm-hmm. Your tag titles are out of contention right now. So, mm-hmm. and the pure title is a pure title. That doesn't, yeah, that's such its own special thing. So, mm-hmm. um, I it feels like they might just be building him up to to get some wins. I feel like he'll probably stick around ROH for a little bit, which is good. You want mm-hmm. mainstays here, but you're right. We got to get some baby face challengers in the mix for these titles, man. Come on, yeah, like all these heels got to have somebody that's gonna eventually beat them, right? Am I right? You're right. You're mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what are we even chasing, Reg? What are we chasing? What are we chasing? <laughs> Waterfalls. Are we chasing? Don't do it. <laughs> Stick to the rivers and the lakes. Don't go You're chasing them. They told us that decades ago. I tell you, <laughs> we were warned. We were mm-hmm. warned. Mm-hmm. So one cool thing about the show was we did get three women's matches, which I did love to Mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And your favorite competitor of all time, Sky Blue and Robin Mm Renegade. In this Mm -hmm. match, I can't, man, the roly roly spot is not for me. (laughs) You just don't like it, huh? (laughs) I don't. And and not because of them. I don't want to see anybody do it. Mm -hmm. Well, and if it's going to be done, it has to be done like that's one of those things that has to be done extremely well to work, I think. Mm-hmm. And when you're just like seesawing back and forth and nobody is making adjustments, it just looks mm-hmm. like you're on some sort of weird little ride or something. Mm-hmm. It was not, a, not, you gotta not be like perfect. a really fast luchador in order for it to like really look like some shit. But for the most part, it's just a weird looking seesaw type deal. Yeah. Or, or like a super crisp technician that like, yeah, when one gets one up on the other, they like, they adjust in some way like that's Mm -hmm. that's usually my ideal part of that sequence but Mm -hmm. you know we do what we do sky blue with the win robin renegade little weirdo get your hands (laughs) at people's mouths that's disgusting (laughs) but perfectly this is a fine little match to keep the story going but what i loved is we get this promo from athena shortly after Mm -hmm. where athena says sky blue 
if you only took your gear out of your ass for two seconds. Yes, she went there. There's been a line in every Athena promo of late mm-hmm. where I'm like, porcelain trash hussies. Like, mm-hmm. I am I am loving the juice that we're getting into. She says she's getting by on her sex appeal, all this stuff. We got a promo from Sky Blue later that was not my favorite. Mm. She was kind of talking about everything that she earned here. And I was like, you have five wins here and only yep. losses at the other place. <laughs> Does it. it feel super earned when you're just beating people that aren't even really in, in this division? Um, just more more generic. But listen, you're going up against a thing that's not going to matter what, much matter. what you do right now. Does I got to be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any mm-hmm. thoughts on this match and any love for the promos that we got? Uh, Athena promo, great, amazing, great seeing the Renegade twins again. They are very cool. I'd like to just see them more in tag team matches, yes. not as one on one jobber people. Not into it. I think Shut. they work better as a tag team because this whole thing is just like kind of boring. They're building up Sky Blue. Let's get this match over with so we can build somebody else up. Please. Trishadora. Um, Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Trishadora. I love that commentary continually is like, you can't tell them apart when they just look you can definitely tell different. them apart like, very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels very tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. And I actually really, really like it. So mm-hmm. super, super fun stuff there. We get Athena and Sky Blue next week. The challenge was accepted. Why wouldn't it be Athena going to be that? Awesome. Finally. Mm-hmm. Guessing that's going to happen this weekend at the taping. So I'm guessing so. Yeah. yeah. I think. Um, that's okay when the result is predictable. Otherwise, I'd be like, come on. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just a, a fan pet peeve I have is like when there's important matches and they don't happen in real time. Like that's part of why it's hard for me to get into impact is I know mm-hmm. everything before the show True. Mm-hmm. show happens, though. They're on an upswing and it makes me very, very happy to hear that. Mm-hmm. But we move along to Brian Cage, six man champion. Out there on his own again. with mm-hmm. Prince Nana mm-hmm. defeating Brock Anderson, who boy oh boy does that guy look and sound like his dad that so is much. His you can't fake that paternity test, Arn Anderson. That <laughs> is your kid, bro. That's him. <laughs> no faking here, man. <laughs> you are not wrong on that. My you goodness. are the father, Arn you Anderson. Are the father looking R.I.P. Mori, but we didn't need him for this one. This was a. Uh, a clear cut one, and honestly, his DDT is pretty great. It's not mm-hmm. nobody's got arms, but really, no. really nice DDT in here. Yes, he learned what, and don't come at me for dunking across brands. Okay, mm-hmm. he learned what Dominic Mysterio did not learn in hey the past yo. like three, years, which is if you're gonna be associated with your dad, or in Dominic's case, is it real or fake dad, you gotta be able to do one of their moves. Dominic, like. He needs to be practicing that 619 day and night. Anytime he's not on TV, he should be in the ring trying to get at least one of these moves down, like you said. <laughs> one Just one this. of them. The frog splash. I'm not expecting the three Just amigos one to of them. Up. But, man. Your dad's oh, man. Ray Mister. Your dad is who many, and I consider the greatest cruiserweight of all time, far and away. Just one of them, Dominic. Just get one of them down. <laughs> Just, one. Just get one of them down. But... Brock Anderson's DDT looking really good at a match mm-hmm. that we knew what the, the result was going to be here. Um, Brian Cage smooshing Brock a little bit. Not a, mm-hmm. not as competitive as the past two weeks that we've seen. I just wanted to wear like my six man tag belts are. That's I think it. the mogul affiliate merger was a really, really good thing. I feel like mm-hmm. um, Trench and... Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Toa. Wait. No. No, Parker. Uh, Parker Boudreaux. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I was like in my head. I had I was like yeah, Harlan. Can't lose NXT the memories guys. out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like they did, they could use some more time and a little bit more work. It feels like we're pivoting a little bit toward this, mm-hmm. which yeah. Brian Cage behind Swerve is that's just a dastardly combination mm-hmm. right there. So mm-hmm. a little more into that, but mm-hmm. he's a six man champion over here. And we've only been seeing one of the men of the three men of the six man picture. Here. We did see the other two guys on AWTV recently. So yes, hopefully 
they are back established also as part of this TV taping that we're going to keep putting over because we've been waiting for it for a long time. So hopefully they defend those belts or fucking lose them to somebody else so we can see them on TV. <laughs> yeah, like I need my Dalton Castle back with the boys, without the boys. Like I feel like for they already ran the six man picture, but like maybe they should have handed those over to them because they're just the best. Like, maybe they're trying to get a tactic to keep Brian Cage conscious. Look, we got belts, but, like, he's here now. So, like, all right. Give yeah, he's he's here. And I'm not even taking the belts off him. I'm just saying, put him on my TV as a six man. Something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just another championships that we can see defended every week, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. RH thing. I love ROH. I love you guys. We love ROH. We love yes. you. Athena continues to dominate. I want more stories for her and all of ROH. I hear ya. I also want Hoss fights for her, Vanessa Craven, or Sawyer Wreck. Sawyer Wreck having a time in Japan. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, Sawyer Wreck. More and Helico on my TV. We are going to get to that in the main event, but thank you so much. For I want to see Sawyer Wreck uh, everywhere too because she's cool. And she chokes slams people very hard. So yeah. She. Man, some of the the stuff I was seeing that she was doing in Japan this past run, I was like, my goodness, fun. what a yeah, and just <laughs> such a a presence about her too. Mm. What a what a fun wrestler to watch. Keep your that eye sinister out. Sinister smile she always has. Just yeah, little sick dastardly, <laughs> dastardly. <laughs> Any thoughts mm-hmm. on on what we saw in the match here? What um I already forgot Brian what match we were Brock? talking about. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got distracted. That's, very that's where we're at though. Quickly, like, yeah, yeah like I'm just all these <laughs> matches back to back with no nothing going on. Uh, very cool to see uh Brock Anderson here. I want to see more development from this guy. I mean, Arn Anderson's son. That's crazy. One of the greatest of all time for horsemen, all this. So you want to see them going on here. But yeah, like you said, I think the last couple of weeks of Brian Cage matches have been like some displays for the Brian Cage's opponents. Like we saw the Leo Rush match, yeah. uh, Leo Ruff match, Leon Ruff match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 95 years LR. old. We saw the LR, Leon LR. Ruff match. <laughs> yes. It is, yes, <laughs> exactly. Let my mistake be uh all of our win. But we yeah. saw that match and Leon got a great display. This was just kind of like uh Brock getting throttled by Brian Cage. So um, but you know, um they've set up a lot of people that in the future we could see having a prominent role, and I wouldn't be mad seeing Brock Anderson out here. Uh, doing his old school dad thing in Ring of Honor. I think he could play a pretty cool role. Yeah, and it sounded like back when AEW Dark was a thing so long ago. <laughs> I think it was tagging with Brian Pillman, right? As like a yeah. generational. That's a, that's a fun angle and that's a good use that of is. Brian Pillman, I think. That would be a, yeah. like them versus like the workhorse bin, I feel like we're yeah. back into like NWA of your We didn't get it. We didn't get enough Haas stuff in this uh we haven't in the last couple of weeks like we need the workhorse man we need silas young we need those big burly ugly guys to punch each other and we don't you know there's not enough ugly dudes punching each other on tv it's too pretty mm. Always everybody's too pretty cute this week. everyone's yeah. too cute yeah too cute cutest. Get them back on Too my cute. TV. We want, some, <laughs> we want some gnarly dudes. I want my Iron Savages. I want my workhorse men. Bring Nick Camarado out here. He's That's just right. burly. Yeah, yeah, come on. Fun mm-hmm. feature coming out on Five Full Select about him. So Bam. there you Boom. go. Subscribe to Five Full Select. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steph DeLander and Willow Nightingale. Yes. Very, very cool. I mm-hmm. know you don't like Ian rapping. But there are some things that I really love today. One, the mm-hmm. tremendous gap between Caprice and Ian, mm-hmm. showing that Ian is clearly extremely scripted at this. Yeah, <laughs> which we knew, but God mm-hmm. bless him. This was so mm-hmm. much fun. Caprice calling him Ricky Bones. I almost yep. fell off my chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Willow just eating up that they're doing that a commentary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's mm-hmm. so great. Mm-hmm. Just so much exuberance here. And I love the combination of her and Steph Delander here. What a fun combo because I feel like Steph is so sneaky strong in a lot of ways. Like there's yeah. a lot that she did in this match. She's doing some fun, silly stuff with Matt Cardona we've seen on line and in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and a talent that's, I think, really finding her 
identity in wrestling right now, which is yeah. cool to see. It's really cool mm -hmm. to see that thrive after kind of the back and forth that she's had. So mm -hmm. very, very happy to see this. This was a really fun match. Willow mm -hmm. wins with the spine buster as one would expect. Loved also in the beginning shenanigans, Nigel being like, you talked over Bobby Cruz. <laughs> just, just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He's so great, and he mm -hmm. just fits in so well with Ian yeah. and Caprice. But a really, really fun match here. I'd love to see more of Steph Delander in the future. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts? Uh, Steph Delander is really cool. I like that. Um, I think she's been getting better in the ring, but getting with Matt Cardona was such a smart idea just because he knows everything out of the ring in order to build your stock. And, you know, to be attached to him as kind of his second, now that his wife is up there making the big bucks. That's right. To, is, uh, <laughs> and to be able to do like this heel shtick and like GCW and stuff has been really dope for her career. So to see her here against Willow is awesome. And the, like you said, she's a sneaky, strong, sneaky, strong girl, as they yeah. say. And, you know. Willow is kind of the same. They they kind of have a lot of the same qualities. So to see them uh, wrestle against each other here was awesome. Just like two big, strong girls squaring off. I like to see more of Steph Delander out here in uh, Ring of Honor and or, or anywhere, actually, because she's a very tremendously talented woman. But, you know, Willow is Willow. Oh, best baby. of the best. She's amazing. Anytime she has a match, you just see her charisma it comes off the screen. She's powerhouse. She just when she does her her spots, you just like, man, she is so cool. And the way that she power bombs people just melts my heart. It's beautiful. She is someone who it felt like got so comfortable so fast. Like when she yeah. kind of came up because. We had talked about this before. Like, I think she was probably earmarked for Ring of Honor, but she just mm -hmm. caught like fire with the crowd. Like, not for a second. And yes, character, but it feels very authentic. Like, just so like I get to be wrestling today. Like, that's yeah. her whole vibe. That's I get, and I love it. I love happy to it. be here. Like, you uh, like yeah. there's some wrestlers that are like that's like a detriment to them. It's like, no, you need to get your shit together. It's more than just being happy to be here. Like, you should be blah 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 about your spot but it's like no you she's happy to be here and it's really cool to see you know what i mean like she takes advantage of these opportunities and you just want her to win yeah she's extremely easy to root for extremely easy to root for really fun match right here really mm -hmm. good stuff women's division may be starting to form we learned okay. if i've also locked that ashley mm -hmm. d'amboise was yeah. signed she's tight yeah, we're getting to see some some more talent. I'll throw some people in because I keep getting questions about this. And one name that I keep forgetting to bring up on here is Kayla Sparks. I think she mm -hmm. would be an awesome addition. Mm -hmm. I think her and Billy Starks could do some really fun. You have a Sparks mm -hmm. and Stark connection. Hey. Um, they could be really fun on the same side of the fence or against each other. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to see what's to come, as impatient as I am for the solidified rosters i'm mm -hmm. i like getting to see talent showcased especially now that dark is gone r.i.p dark so mm -hmm. there's going to be a <laughs> lot of i think coming out of these tapings we're going to see the next contender for athena because they hopefully everybody that we've been talking about willow trish uh billy like all these women are going to be involved in the tapings and build up their stock and hopefully at the end of this we got a new number one contender and somebody that we believe is actually going to beat athena yes definitely or at least <laughs> the the story that's gonna set us on that path i will, I will and, you know yeah, right mm -hmm. for sure the like hey guess who's coming up we'll mm -hmm. be really really fun with that mm -hmm. so we close out with angelico and commander a match Spot made for food us finish this <laughs> up <laughs> I was like, I hope they have at least one match for me. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to put the main event on in the middle, mm -hmm. this is a good main event to actually main event. So mm -hmm. this was really, really fun. Uh, yes. A phenomenal shooting star press uh -huh. to end it for Commander. Mm -hmm. uh, and Helico looked really good here. He gets mm -hmm. kind of underutilized and lost in the shuffle. It is so weird to hear like the Spanish announced project music yeah. like that moniker. I'm just like, can't nah, there was one Spanish. I can't they get behind it. I can't either. And especially mm -hmm. in Ring of Honor, like it was, it was rough. It's enough. weird. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough enough in AEW. And now that it's in this promotion, I'm like, uh, come on. 
And I, hey. I love everybody involved in the faction too. There's a lot of really yeah. great people in there. I love Luther totally. and Pentaco. Yeah. Uh, but right here, a very, very good match. We get some good stuff uh, from at the end here. And then mm -hmm. we get some weird stuff at the end here with Sir Pentaco attacking him uh, from behind. You know, um, the... <laughs> But if this sets up Commander versus Orange Cassidy for the title, I'll be no. You gotta tell me what title. the hell happened here, Kate. What's Orange Cassidy doing here? What the hell's Orange Cassidy doing here randomly? I was so Orange confused. Cassidy. I was like, "Damn, this is a cool match." And then dit, dit. I'm like, "Wait, what? Why?" It was an odd one. Orange Cassidy and Bandito came out to say for the save and send the Spanish announced project running for the hills here. Wow. Uh, very, very kind of odd. But if this is like a, if this gets us to an Orange Cassidy versus Commander uh, okay. international title match, like built on respect and just a bunch All of right. fun. I'll take it, but this was a okay. weird little play after a really fun match. Your yeah. thoughts on the match? You are the king of spot foo. You are the media man. Yes. You are here for this match. You love this. I like it too, but it is your shit. Your shit this up. was a uh, commander on display. He did all the rope walking phenomenal things you could ever you are imagine. so happy right now spot foo all around he did this springboard spinning a hundred times into an arm drag to start off the match where i was just like whoa it's crazy and uh and helico is such a great base as they as they said in commentary he's been uh he has a very big uh time in mexico and we know all the lucha underground so uh, anybody that you want to have, if you want to put Commander on display, you want to put him on display against somebody like Angelico. And Commander hit the the big giant running all the way to the other side dive. He hit the uh, the finish of the rope walking um, into the the shooting star press. He also hit that rope walking tornillo. That the one thing that I noticed is the Ring of Honor replays are to they start them to short they need to have longer clips of the replays because like you're missing the rope rock part that's like the most important part if you're showing me a commander replay i want to see the rope rock part don't put it after the rope rock that's part of the the appeal here but yeah this was super awesome this is exactly that spot boo shit you love and helico looked awesome i think he'd be a great addition to somebody was saying in the chat the ring of honor pure division yes 100 percent. he'd be very cool here he's uh he fits that spot and he would bring a different uh, different kind of style and element to it but then one uh, five seconds later i'm the most confused i've ever been in my whole life what <laughs> is orange Cassidy doing here of all the people like they were like oh yeah I, th I guess we're getting a crossover from uh aw tv but are we because why are they saving me <laughs> what if if we're thinking about what just happened like they just had a match on the the show yesterday but the Spanish announce project didn't have nothing to do with that match. Like, why are they saving uh commander here? I'm just confused. But if we're getting, like you said, a match with orange Cassidy and commander or bandito and him, then shit. Okay. I mean, yes, but I also made that up. So we have to see if that's what actually happens. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it I'm was, super was, confused still. <laughs> I was trying to grasp, straws for something mm -hmm. that i might be trying to do here but uh it, it was a weird way to go home it feels like at the end of these tony cons like hey throw everybody's favorites out there because... there you go yeah they've been here for six hours <laughs> run down there orange they stayed those for so 13 long. people are gonna be real excited about this <laughs> i don't know i was just kind of i don't know funny guy this tony Khan. funny guy yeah, straight up mm-hmm it never gets old for me and i don't care if it gets old for you uh <laughs> he is funny he is a funny guy mm -hmm. he's a very funny guy mm -hmm. we got a chat from ronald hollick asking do you think claudio will get to debut in new japan alongside mox and shota versus okada's hahashi and ishii Woo, for New Japan Dominion on June 4th. Great question, Ronald. I've talked about this on a couple of different podcasts now. And if it's him or Brian Danielson, we all cry tears of joy forever. It's probably going to end up being Yuta, but let's just keep fantasizing that it's either Claudio or Brian Danielson. I like 
your scenario better. I also like Luis <laughs> reminding you to leave a thumbs up. Get us to 69 likes, okay? Nice. I am committed to the bit through thick and thin. All mm -hmm. right. I'm here for it. Luis mm -hmm. knows. Respect. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Reg, that brings us to the end of the show. Do you want to do some rec spec or would you like to play a Mad Lib? Because I got Mad, Mad Lib. Yeah. Do you really mm -hmm. want to? Mm -hmm. oh, sick. <laughs> I'm so excited to do a Mad Lib. Come on. I had to do this during NXT because NXT is so bad, but we just have extra time. Wow. NXT. Ew. How was it with all the draft? Is it like gutted? Oh, it hasn't been gutted yet. It's not until next week that they're gutted. Not gutted yet, but. It, I don't know if it felt this way to you in the draft, but to me, it kind of felt like Shawn Michaels had no idea who was getting called. Yeah, no, like when he was out there, it felt like he was like, hey, yo, nobody told me anything about this. <laughs> What's going on? I didn't know you're going to take all. Hey, all the champions that you have, we need them. <laughs> yeah, like even the injured ones. I was like, what is going what? on? And also, like, if you could take champions, how are you not taking Mel? It was weird. And then they did the uh, they took the women's tag team champions and then they had them in a match against the other women's tag team that they took for I'm I'm like what are you why are you guys destroying this division like this like what's the there I, people thought I was being hyperbolic I was like no there's actually no tag teams left in NXT there's zero now hmm. um which I think is a good sign because they may merge the titles but which I think they need to do. There's yes, just be one set of women's tag team championships throughout the whole everything. Hundred percent. Because they but don't I'm, have enough tag teams in any in SmackDown Raw or NXT. Nope. So my the thing that makes me nervous is they're drafted to SmackDown. Mm. So it could be like the SmackDown tag titles, and mm. then you have Liv and Raquel on the Raw ones. But I'm I'm hoping that they just get unified. That's also just an easy pay per view program to pull together. So. Right. We'll see. But more importantly, Reg, I need you to name a color. Uh, green. Green. I need a plural noun. Um, it's so much pressure, isn't it? I know. I'm like, uh, uh, you can chat them out in chat. I won't. Uh, yeah, help me. Somebody help, because yeah. you don't even have to super chat. Oh, why is my phone? <laughs> one second. One second. Too popular. Too popular. Phone buzzing. Uh, no, uh, my uh, laptop was dying. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to put phones down. Yeah. It looked like mm. you were fixing your phone. Adjective. Mm. Mm. Running. Running? Mm. That's a verb. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> See, I can't play this game because I'm high. I'm putting running in the verb section, though. Adjective is a descriptive word. Uh, uh, fighting. <laughs> I'm in. This is more herbs. Give me an exclamation, like a zoinks uh, or a uh, bazinga. Crossover, baby. Joel and Crest are gonna be like, "What the fuck are they doing?" A silly word. Uh. <laughs> I'm saying spot foo. You don't get yes. to pick that one. No, I was gonna say verb in the past tense. <laughs> What's that? A verb in the past tense. Um, um, mm, sleeping, sleepy, slept. wait, slept. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Another plural noun. Somebody said herbs in the chat. And herbs, yeah, and spices. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Uh okay, spices will be the next one. <laughs> a verb. One Again. More. Another verb. Two mm. more. This is the greatest segment in wrestling podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this every week. I'm wrapping up the show we really on purpose. Absolutely <laughs> not. You're gonna hit the vape pen out of air. We're gonna try and do smoke. This. Yeah, it's just nothing but weed things. And a plural noun. Mm. Huh? Again? What more plural noun and you're done? You chose this. I can't believe I chose this. What was the other <laughs> option? I should have picked that. Just said bullshit about ROH. And oh, no. This and is whatever. better. Mm -hmm. This is more fun. Sp SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs. Mm -hmm. 
This is the most stoner. <laughs> and I love it so much. Even from her color choice. One day, Little Green Riding Hood. Was green. So <laughs> I'm just such a fucking cliche stoner. I love it. No, it's awesome. <laughs> we need that in the world. It's way more peaceful. One day, Little Green Riding Hood was going through the forest carrying a basket of phones for her grandmother. Suddenly, Terrible. she met a big fighting wolf. Bazinga, said the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> big bank theory crossover. It's in my money, bro. It is. Where is it? We get that lead in. That ratings lead in is great. I'm trying to tell you. Where are you going, little spot foo? Mm -hmm. Where are you going, little spot foo? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. My God. That's your new nickname, little mm -hmm. spot foo. Little spot I'm going to my grandmother's house, she said. Then the wolf slept away. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> when Miss Riding Hood got to her grandmother's house, the wolf was in bed dressed like her grandmother. My grandmother, mm -hmm. she said, what mm -hmm. big herbs you have. Mm -hmm. Better to smoke. run to running you with, mm -hmm. said the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Better to running said, you with. Her grandma's obviously <laughs> high. Grandmother, <too. laughs> look, she had big herbs, according mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and grandmother, she said, what big spices you have? Mm -hmm. Herbs and spices, baby. To better to smoke you with. I'm saying it straight up. <laughs> Grandma is a stoner. Better to smoke Respect. you with. Grandma's high. And then she said, What big spaghettios you have, grandmother? Mm -hmm. But the wolf said nothing. He just died of indigestion from eating the grandmother. Yeah. Damn. Well, hopefully he got a nice little like contact high situation. From there. That's how it's got to be. <laughs> Shout out to high grandmas. Shout out to wolves. Shout out to high grandmas. Shout out to wolves. <laughs> Best podcast ever. This yeah. might be my favorite episode. I mean, it is what it is. That's uh, We're just trying to fill the void of Ring of Honor. Uh, it's bring true. it back to it to its roots if anybody's going to ring of honor in the chat yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking shout us out man Say something. yeah let us know what you think of will washington's ring of honor if there's anything you don't like at will washington uh <laughs> <laughs> well washington just gonna be getting dragged we're never being <laughs> recipes to you my high recipes to your high grandma mm -hmm. <laughs> this is great too mm -hmm. what are we doing no idea what? things are we off the rails the and it's a very, I don't know mm -hmm. why people are so thrown off. We talked a little bit at the beginning until about nine o'clock because that's mm -hmm. when we knew people would be tuning in. We mm -hmm. reviewed Ring of Honor. And yeah. then I said, we can have some productive pro wrestling conversation or we can play yeah. Mad Libs. Mm -mm. We played Mad Libs and Reg is kind of bad at it. it I'm awful. While. I'm terrible. I can't be, can't be good at everything. But this is my fifth wrestling podcast this week, and I have one of them has to be about. Oh, Netflix. poor you! That's me every <laughs> week. No two stream days. People don't realize like how much energy that is. That's like I'm a, saying, ooh, man, just to be long. talking about stuff. Oh my god, wrestling? and to be talking kind of about the same thing. Everybody. I'm saying, everyone's <laughs> like, "Well, how about that WWE draft?" And I'm like, "Oh, okay, I'll say try to say something different than I said the last time." Yeah. It's... <laughs> Man, when you get to the point where you're like, you're like, did I say that on this podcast yeah. already? This... <laughs> Was that five minutes ago or two days ago? I don't know. Exactly. Who, who knows? Exactly. Mm. Well, Reg, saved by the bell. And by the bell, I mean corporate Cresta. Hey. Ah, hey. I was pulling oh, up sorry. the other. I was pulling up y'all guys' chat on the other screen. Hey, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off guard. Was, did I interrupt a, a facial hair application of any sort? Nah, not today. I've worn a lot of makeup this week. My birthday was Tuesday. I've been a very hairy man. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I turned 9,076, so I'm, I'm quite proud. Yeah. I'm almost as old as Mumra or Vince McMahon, depending on who you ask. <laughs> or me. Mm -hmm. How are How you, you guys doing? doing? Uh, my voice says you can clearly hear. I'm, again, I've been a very hairy man this week. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! How are you guys? Jesus. Oh, we are good. We had a good episode of ROH. We just played a Mad Lib for no reason, and now we're going to talk to you. I'm so. the worst Mad Lib player ever. Somebody said I want to see Reg play Scrabble. Look, I'm pretty good at Scrabble. I can rap. I just don't know. You know, black people don't be knowing verbs and nouns. What it's called. <laughs> 
we just do it, you know? I respect that answer. But my mom was an English teacher. So growing up oh, as a kid, trying to play on. Scrabble against that woman, I'm putting cat and she's putting fracking. And I'm like, <laughs> come, I'm on. Six. come on, <laughs> mom. I'm six. That's What's crazy. going on? Sure Do you want to play Mad Lib? We can play Mad Lib right now. So I haven't played a Mad Lib in <laughs> like eight thousand years. <laughs> Chris is gonna be much better than I am. I'm guessing. This is this is the best gimmick ever. I'm so mm-hmm. I got this. I got this big Mad Lib. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, would you end up going gonna... for your birthday, Krista? Yeah. Uh, we're doing this Mad Lib for my birthday. Yeah. Let's no, I said, it. what did you end up doing <laughs> for your birthday? <laughs> okay. So like super last minute, my little brother works at this mini golfing place mm. and we went to this underground mini golfing place. with a lot of FinTech bros and the drinks were so strong. They were $15. So first of all, that was a red flag. Yeesh. I was like, that's too yes. much money. That's but I had money. a sip of their frozen drink and it was mostly, whoa, oh, it was mm. mostly adult beverage. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. I was quite pleased with this price point, but because my little brother worked there, what I should have spent, I did not spend, and I ended up mini golf and being a big old jabroni. And I had a great uh-huh. time. Didn't I mm-hmm. get a singular hole in one? I, I picked up the ball at one point and just put it in the. You got to. You got to get a win, especially on your birthday. Come on. And the yeah, servers are giving me free shots because, hey, it's your birthday. So here's an extra putt putt shot. And of mm-hmm. course, I took it. By the time I left there, I didn't know if I was bowling, batting a thousand, <laughs> or throwing the pigskin. So I had a great time. Chris, this was in New York. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask which location? I played many mini golf locations in New York. Wait, you live in New York, Kate? I used to. I lived there for seven oh, years. Oh, okay. So this now. just opened. It's by uh I don't want to give out my little brother's job location. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot of you course. were working there. Uh, yes, like, yeah. are you Chris's brother? And we yeah, look yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be it weird. is. My little brother's not from No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Nope, nope. Mm-hmm. Bad idea. Mm-hmm. Nope. Backtracking. So how we play these mad lives, girl? Okay, ready? All right, Chris, this birthday mad lib. I need a noun. Oh my God. In this moment, my brain said, What's a noun? See? Uh, her, right? I told you it's not just me. <laughs> person, God, place, or me. thing. Um, Dr. Phil. I'm saying whatever comes to my head, and this is chaos. Mm-hmm. You you birth, you ask the worst person. No, this is this is one in already. That's the, the worst best. person. <laughs> I need an okay. adjective, a descriptive word. Sticky. <laughs> I need a verb, an action word. Jousting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a wordsmith, y'all. I, I'm a you are. To live in your brain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> an adverb, which is a descriptive word, usually ending in ly. Usually ending in ly. Like lovely or jabronally. <laughs> 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 Spell that. Bleed that. You are my literal <laughs> hero. Mm-hmm. Give me a noun. Um, apartment building. Mm-hmm. Uh, an adjective. That's the one with the ly. Mm-hmm. No, that's an adverb. An adjective is a descriptive word. Jabronally. <laughs> <laughs> um, short. Very nice. Okay. A plural noun. We actually have three plural nouns in a row. Mm. So something uh, now that could be more than one thing. Okay. Fishes. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Joe. We're playing Don't ask questions, Joel. Don't ask questions. Uh-huh. So, fishes. Fishes, riches, bitches. Shout out to Shame Monster for understanding the game that's being played here. <laughs> Oh, Chris Mueller wishing you a happy belated birthday to the star of Fightful, the Jabroni of Fightful. Thank you. Corporate, definitely an official title, definitely seriously given to me officially by Sean Ross. I can produce evidence, right? Right. I mean, uh, I, yeah. The, the contract is right in front of you. <laughs> All right. Now tame yourself because the next question is a part of the body. A part of the body. Big toe. Big toe. <laughs> Nobody clip that. People are weird about feet on the internet, all right? Big toe. You got to pay for that, I thought. Mm -hmm. All right, I got four nouns in a row and another part of the body. Four (laughs) nouns in a row. Let's do a person, Oprah, place, Ohio, thing, jackhammer, and another noun, Uh, wig. That's a thing. Wig flu. Yes, wig. 
So I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that there wasn't much on Ring of Honor that you guys want to talk about. <laughs> we, just, we moved through it real fast. We started kind of early. No, you answered Reg is it. really bad no, at Mad Libs. All awful. right, part of the body, baby girl, and we're done. Um, The back of your neck. <laughs> A big toe on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. Talk like a pirate. Was the name of the Mad Lib? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yar. You can mm -hmm. always pretend to be a bloodthirsty Dr. Phil, threatening mm -hmm. everyone by waving your sticky sword in the air. Mm -hmm. Ooh, controversial. But until you learn to joust like a pirate. You'll never be jabronally accepted as an authentic <laughs> apartment building. So here's what you do. Cleverly work into your daily conversations short pirate phrases that actually work, such as, Ahoy there, fishes! Avast ye riches! And shiver me, bitches! <laughs> off the rails. All the way off. Remember to drop all your G's when you're saying ye say words such as, Sailing, spitting, fighting. This will give you a big toe to start being recognized as a swashbucklet Oprah. Mm -hmm. Once you have the lingo down pat, it helps to wear a three-cornered Ohio on your head and stash a jackhammer in your pants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? That may sound unhinged, but I feel oh like if this God. was the 90s and that was Vince Russo, this would be a great storyline. Honestly, yeah, I can see that on Nitro. You don't yeah. see the vision. You don't see the mm -hmm. Jackhammer Goldberg. Ah, oh, we want. Mm -hmm. You don't see the vision. You don't see the vision. Ah! I <laughs> agree. Well, keep your mm -hmm. jackhammer in your pants. That's a good mm -hmm. lesson this week. Uh, keep mm -hmm. a wig perched atop the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. I know, be a real That's pilot. Nice. Pirate, mm -hmm. my goodness, that was that was poetry. That was art. That was All of this on Fightful, y'all. Look at y'all being Straight educated. We talked art. in depth about Ring of Honor. We reviewed the show. And then we played a Mad Lib or two. That was fun. I had a delightful. Th Thank you for. It was the best birthday gift. You're welcome. Happy mm -hmm. belated. I'm sorry that I missed your birthday. That's that's a not that's all good. Time. I love I it. I didn't do anything. I don't mind being old and doing nothing. Sometimes just laying right. on your floor and having an existential crisis is just what you need. Totally, Literally, thousand percent, mm -hmm. like a daily occurrence for me. Mm -hmm. Hi, Joel. What are you doing here? Joel's a sensible Hi, adult. I'm here. Are you Dave mm -hmm. Meltzer am with I? your microphone I'm... right now? What are we doing? I am. I am. Give so I'm. Scoops. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, hey. Canada. Hey. And, uh, Is Brett Hart? With but you? here's the thing. No, I'm trying to get dinner with Brad Hart. As you know, we Brett. talked about that on Sunday. I know dinner with Brad. That's a movie. Dinner with. I, my dinner with Brett. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I'm in Calgary and going into this this week that I was planning to be here, uh, there was no WWE backlash this weekend. There was no Trinity and Impact Wrestling. And I was going to pass off all my shows to somebody else for the week. Mm -hmm. And then Trinity came to Impact Wrestling and I kind of couldn't miss talking about that. And then uh, Backlash is this weekend, so Kate and I are going to probably talk about that this weekend on Fightful Overbooked. So here I am in my poorly lit room. It's actually my uh, my brother's place, so props oh. to him for helping me out. If Come my internet's funny, though, know, blame him. Uh, mm -hmm. so, okay, got it. Yeah. So yeah, there, so, so it's good to see y'all, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little jet lagged because it's, uh, it's 8 o'clock here, and oh, it's 10 o'clock in my brain. Mm. If you are like, I'm exhausted, I'm having a weird fever dream, I have a feeling we played Mad Libs on the stream yesterday. It was true. Just it was, <laughs> it really Good. happened though. So thank you for confirming that. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. welcome. You're welcome. Uh, how was Trinity's debut before we get out of here? Fantastic. I liked it. I was excited for it. I steered cleared of spoilers, but I yes. am so happy to see. Both of these ladies finally now working. Oh, I cannot oh, yeah. wait for a new audience to see Trinity. It's going to be amazing to see Trinity in a non-WWE setting. I am beyond excited. And the Impact Division is a really test of your metal. So I yep. cannot wait. I cannot wait. And also, her promo tonight, she was promoing with the Usos in the mirror. She was rude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was rude. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about this. This was I, – I saw the uh, – I saw the fan cam cuts 
but this was different. There were little changes, but I, I'm, I'm so happy for Trinity. We're going to talk about that on the show. And uh, I'm yeah, you were there, Joel. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been there. I should have been there. But we did actually, you know what? Just to, I'll plug in the weeds for a second. We did speak with uh, DS Shin from Ring the Bell. Uh, he joined us uh, yesterday on In the Weeds to talk about getting the first interview with Trinity after she debuted with Impact at the Chicago tapings. So go check that out. Uh, yep. That was a really great conversation with, uh, really? with TS, who, by the way, interviews like the most ridiculous and amazing women in wrestling from mm -hmm. divas to like ECW extremists, like the every woman who's come through wrestling, somehow he gets an interview with them and they're always entertaining. Right. Um, Keep your plugs on track with us, okay? Nope, Alex. never. <laughs> nope, not at all. You're at your nope. brother's place, you're making you're a paying. mess, dropping all these names on the floor. Come on, Joel. Mm -hmm. How about we had Joe some fun at ROH tonight. We we got our, our champions back. We got to see some yeah. more Joe and Claudio in action. We nice. got to see Robbie mm -hmm. Cooper's debut. And Reg got a spot for the fest. So a little bit more back on track, but excited to, to go to the uh, <laughs> back to the studio, I think will be a healthy move. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what they pull out when they go back to Orlando. Finally. Any other favorites, Reg, or you want to get out of here? Uh, no, it was mostly my favorite thing was Commander and Angelico in the main event. Just oh, that sounded like that slapped. The, yeah, all the shit that I love, just that lucha shit. It was. We started yeah. talking about it, and Reg's whole face was like, he was so happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was like so Christmas chill and fun and relaxed the rest of the time, but he was just like, oh. That's how I get for that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so mm -hmm. much. But we will turn the reins over to you guys. I'm so excited to hear about what happened on Impact. I love Trinity. Happy, healthy things happening in professional wrestling. Have a wonderful rest of your show. Stick around for it Peace, if you're in the chat. Thanks, y'all. Bye, guys. Have fun. Cresta. Don't pearl and Cresta. Back, back. Cresta. Let me zoom out my camera. What's up? Happy belated birthday. Thank you. How are you? Thank you, guys. I, I wanted to announce more, but I was there was a lot going on. There's been a lot going on, so I've been trying to whatever. But thank you. The best birthday gift is being here with you. You're like my fairy, uh, fairy wrestling godfather, Joel. So oh, Thursdays yeah. have been a delight. Well, your fairy wrestling godfather has awful, awful lighting tonight, so I apologize for it. <laughs> Hopefully, my audio is okay. I mean, as long as you, uh, as long as you keep hitting us with the Mitch Hedberg, I think we'll be all right. I don't know if you got that joke. Oh, you did. You laughed. <laughs> Rice is great when you're hungry and you want 2000 or something. Bro, what a genius joke. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere else can you say, hey, do you want 2000 or something? No. How about some rice? An escalator yeah. can only become stairs, at which point I'm sorry for the convenience. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know my Mitch. I know. I know my Mitch Hedberg. Anyway. <sighs> All Shall right, we do this for real? Let's do the boom clap audio thing. All right, before before I do, this, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. I I may have speed ran the show a little bit, but I have the notes, so we'll be okay. I have notes too, and I've got nice new pens, so my notes are a lot more neater. This looks like almost prison script. My father has abused me with the cleanliness of the handwriting. Oh my god! <laughs> Good on you. All right, are we ready to do this for the audio friends? I am ready for the audio friendo bendo. Let's go. Here we go. Hello, friends. We're back again. It's Fightful.com. It is May the 4th, and may it be with you 2023. I am Atrol Pearl. It's time for your Impact Wrestling Post Show. As always, it is my ride or die, my number one and of course, the belated birthday girl. It's Cresta Star. Cresta, how you doing? Be, 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 be. I am doing quite all right. I've had a fantastic birthday. My birthday was the second, so don't want to confuse anyone. It's not today. It was May the second. Um, I didn't do anything really on my birthday. I just went mini golfing. I am excited to talk about wrestling. I think also on my birthday, it was like confirmed, confirmed that Trinity was there and there were videos coming out. So it was a great birthday gift for me. Ooh -wee. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed your birthday and I'm glad y'all are here with us here on Fightful.com. If you want, go ahead and drop us a thumbs up on the video. It goes a long way. Get friends watching this stuff, talking about Impact Wrestling, talking about Ring of Honor earlier. Kate and Reg, of course, played Mad Libs for an hour and a half. That's really all I can think of is that's what happened. I don't know. Maybe they talked about, I don't know if they talked about Ring of Honor. Maybe they did. Either way, uh, if you want to support us financially and you can, you've got a couple of ways to do it. I'll give you, how about I give you three different ways you can do it? Okay. Three. 
three different ways you can do it. Number one, you can go to FIFOSelect.com and for the best five bucks in the business, you can get all the best stuff, all the best news, all the best content that you can get there for five bucks or more. If you want to give more, you can give more. Or if you want to donate right now, you can leave a super chat here at youtube.com slash Fightful. Any amount, get your question or statement read on the air. We'll talk about Trinity all night. I know we will. And of course, you can go to hopperchats.com, donate some, have a ball. Let's go, Cresta, how they do it. <clears throat> Sorry, I was going to talk, but something else was going to come out and I couldn't do it. Sorry. So you're going to head on over to hopperchats.com, type in your comment. Any dollar amount gets your chat read on air. We will answer. We'll try to give you the best advice or the worst advice you've ever heard in your life. We get to keep a little bit more of the proceeds. It makes us happy. Keeps the lights on. Keeps Sean happy. Humperchats.com. Ding. Well, Ryan, Ben starts us off saying, Joel missed an opportunity for Joe Hendry to sing happy birthday to Cressa. Listen, have you seen that man's face? That face busted. I don't think he's uh, singing much to anybody. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, Go my name is Cressa Star, and it would have seemed that our good friend Joel has been lost to the internet monster. Oh, he's back. Hi, Joel. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of back. This might be the show, but I hope it's not. Cresta, Joe Hendry, how was that? <laughs> to reiterate what I'm seeing in chat, Robo Joel. <laughs> Yeah. This is the Rebellion Post show all over again, isn't it? Rebol Rebol Joel. All right. Rebol. Can we start the show? Can we start can we start talking about impact before I Absolutely. lose everything? BTI. Absolutely. I'm ready. BTI, Laredo Kid defeats Jack Price. It's a good match. It's a solid match. Honestly, I don't have much to say. I missed George Iceman this week, but I assume he was just talking about Trinity and what's going to come next with that. Uh, the Jack La the Jack Price Laredo Kid match, very cool looking moonsault elbow drop combination gets the win for Laredo Kid. Solid match. Good way to bring Laredo Kid back into uh, the impact stream. What do you think? Um. For the Iceman Intel, he did drop that if Jordan Grace unsuccessfully beats Deanna Parazzo or doesn't beat Deanna Parazzo at um, is it coming up? Under Siege, sorry, she can no longer challenge for the champion as long as Deanna is the Knockout Swimming Championship. That match, that crowd was in love with Laredo Kid, and even though I feel like Jack. Jack Price moved a little bit slower than Laredo Kid. He never seemed like he was out of tune. For almost, he always kept trying to keep him like slow down, keep him down on the ground. But Laredo Kid was not letting that happen. Also, commentary put over that Laredo Kid's, for the lack of a better word, intestines exploded. And Jack Price constantly focusing on that was really smart. It was a great match. I can't wait to see them on Impact proper getting a proper like program. Yeah, this is a really solid match. I think you're right. You bring it, you run it back on the main show, and it can turn out really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, you know, Laredo Kid, always a good time and impact. You put a lucha match on in front of a Chicago crowd, they love their lucha. Can't blame them. It's fun. True. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the main show. We start with Yu Yu Mora versus, or Yu Yu Mora and Repinder Gujar taking on Musa Myers. Did I miss anything? No, that is the opening contest. Yeah, yeah. They started yeah. with it straight away. I think um, Moose and uh, Myers were already in the ring. Yeah. Or, or okay. somebody was already in the ring. Yeah. Commentary is mentioning that Ace of Bays are kind of looking for the next challenger. And immediately I was like, oh, so it's clearly Moose and Brian Myers, which is fine. They get the win after a pretty even. It was a pretty even paced match. And then you had Moose Ben Gujar to get the win. Gujar looked great again. I'm waiting for his single push. We talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Cresta, let's talk about the match real quick. Other than, you know, what's next for Ace of Bays, clearly it seems to be Musa Myers. I have <clears throat> only two, really three things to say about this match. In the beginning, it kind of gave me false hope because I felt like for the first half of that match, Moose was eating shit. They were really beating up Moose or he was selling. I was buying whatever he was selling. Then the momentum changed, and when Moose speared Guja out his damn boots, oh, that that spear for the win was gnarly. It looked so good. He speared that man out his boots. I was like, all right, it does make sense. You guys will tag, I don't think, successfully over Aces of Bays, and that's fine. And then Moose will turn on Myers, and we're going to get a great program out of that because it's Moose. Of course he's going to turn on you. He's an angry Moose. <laughs> And that's the thing about Moose, right? He 
continues to look good even when he's getting beat down. Like he knows yeah. how to sell. He knows how to make it look. He knows how to make his opponents look good even when he gets the win. Like the spear that he hit on Gujar was just solid. Oh. Gujar sold it well. Mm -hmm. Good dominant win. And I don't hate the idea of Ace of Bays taking on Moose and Myers next. It's a couple of bigger guys for Ace of Bays. And that's another obstacle for them to overcome. Both men are very, um, they're, they're veterans in the business. So I wouldn't mind seeing that matchup. Maybe it under siege. And even though I feel like Chris Bay and Ace Austin has done, have done their fair share of cheating in the past. You've never been against a cheater like Moose. <laughs> oh. A one cheater Moose. <laughs> Moose is a yam bag Yahtzee type of cheater. So like y'all may have cheated. Like I think the worst cheating Ace Austin has ever done was trying to get Alicia to cheat on Eddie Edwards. You know what I mean? I think that was the worst. But that was it. Like Moose is Moose will come to your house. He'll set, he'll set your house on fire. <laughs> Can you blame him? I mean, if you want the insurance money. All right. Anyway, we're not going to do that. <laughs> well, speaking of the insurance money, let's go to who shot Santino because clearly that's what we're up to. Uh, Detective Dango is reprising his SmackDown 2017 backdrop with the uh, the the big board with the who who took out Santino, and then they bring in Joe Hendry, and we mention his busted ass face. Oh my goodness! Ah, I'm sorry. It's just the way that Dango said, "Ugh." All right, I need another set of eyes. Say his name, and then Joe Hendry pulls up, and Dango just looks at him like. What happens to your face? <laughs> not a hello, not a thank you, but just a, what happened to you? <laughs> I had a good laugh. It was a really good. And listen, really good. when they told us a couple of weeks ago that Joe Hendry had a broken nose, I did not expect to see him show up with his face busted up like that. So kudos to, uh, to Joe Hendry for showing up to work. That's right. Anyway, so eventually they get to the point where, first of all, they lost the, uh, the tuft of hair. Dango <laughs> reveals that information. And then they decide that Trey Miguel must have, uh, they must have done it because they must have taken out Santino because uh -huh. X marks the spot. X, he's the X division champion. And Trey has had issues with Santino in the past. Crest to start, who did it? Who really do you think did it? Who took out Santino Morella? Johnny Bravo. <laughs> okay. Let me say this. When I first started seeing Dango in here, I was like, this is really weird, borderline cringe. And just like when Johnny Swinger turned the corner for me, this is that, this promo right here. I was like, this is so stupid, but this is brilliant. This is, this week I've gotten two stupidly, hilariously pro wrestling sports entertainment promos. And this was the second one. The first one was with Mark Briscoe yesterday. That was, ah, this was so good. I liked it. And I'm really beginning to like the chemistry between Joe Hendry and Dirty Dango, or just Dango, I would like to see them in a tag team, but kind of also don't want to see them in a tag team. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but who took out Santino? Who did it? Come on. Johnny Bravo, final end. You think it's uh, Johnny Bravo? You think they brought I, Johnny Bravo back just for that? I, girl, I... Honestly, once you lost the tuft of hair, and then when they said Trey Miguel, I was like, okay, maybe. And then after that, my first thought was Black Taurus, tuft of hair. Who else got hair like that? It's a bull. It was Black Taurus, but that don't make any sense. But it's Impact Wrestling. Describe something that makes sense. Fair. Nothing makes sense. That's why we watch it. It's great. It's great. But I don't know who did it. I mean, I, I think it was sports. Dango. <laughs> why? <What? laughs> Because we Dango wants to be super serious wrestler Dango. How does he do it? He takes out the guy he wants the position of. <laughs> this is super serious wrestler Dango starting his big serious wrestling turn. I actually love that. I actually love that. Actually, I'm not, I am thinking too much inside of the box. You investigate yourself so that you can't find yourself wrong of any wrongdoing. That's a big, that's a big brain play. It was Gresham in a wig, someone says in the chat. <laughs> it was one of Bobby Lashley's sisters. I'm sorry. It, you know what it was? It was it was Jonathan Gresham's new uh, mustache. Oh, and, I loved it. Paying homage to Vince McMahon, that guy. My God. We're going to talk about that. We'll get oh, to the match. Uh, I loved it. <laughs> let's talk about Big Con versus Sammy Callahan. It was supposed to be Sammy versus Diener because Diener had made a uh, challenge to Sammy. Sammy comes out and he's expecting Diener and Diener says, well, 
you took you you accepted but you didn't accept the challenge for me you accepted it for big con and con just beats that ass and then angels gets in on it too they do a little bit of a back and forth but they do this there's an immediate sneak attack by the design that starts it off sammy eventually fights off con calls out diener diener gets on the apron does thumbs up thumbs down of his own and out comes the army of violence anyway all the the yellow jackets not the show the the, the guys in the yellow hoodies they swarm sammy they take him down and then diener calls them off and then uh diener nails sammy with that bat stands over him it sounds like we're going to do this match at under siege well i kind of feel like how many times must we teach you this lesson old man sammy callahan you are one person i think the last time you were in an actual group was like reno scum and that was a million years ago so oh, I mean, you know, it's gone. <laughs> oh. that was one of my first instances of ever seeing impact ever. And I just remember this guy with the raccoon hair. I was like, oh, my God, that's me in high school. <laughs> but the point still stands like, or maybe it was OV. I cannot remember. It's been a very long time since yeah, you was OV. It. it was OV. Like it's been a very long time since you've been in anything. So why do you keep beefing with these guys? Like, I get it. But kind of not really because you're not really destroying them. Also, Diener, why are you hitting with the old bait and switch? <laughs> I want to challenge you. All right. I want to fight. Psych you out, fight Khan. <laughs> hey, man. Macklin did the same thing. So, you know, let's let's that's give it. some credit here. We'll, we'll talk about it. That, that's just how you become a world champion in Impact Wrestling now. That's just what it is. The ye uh, old bait and switch. I don't need to talk about Trey Miguel pointing the blame at Dango because we just established that Dango took out Santino. Okay. Yeah, scientific. Jimmy Jacobs uh, is standing by. He hosts another episode of What's Old This Then? And now comes Nick Aldis. <laughs> he says that there are rumors and speculation about Aldis versus Macklin going down. And he's like, hey, I've stated my intention is to be in the hunt for the Impact World Championship, not to waltz into a title shot. Puts over the Impact World title and its value and its history and its lineage. And he says, I'll go through the entire roster and I have every intention of stepping over everyone to get my shot at the title. And then in walks Kenny King. And what did I tell you, Crest of Star? He's Kenny, a- Kenny King interrupts and says, hey, if you want, uh, if you want to do the work or do you want to fast track Nick Aldis, what do you want to do? Uh-huh. And Aldis is like, well, you fancy yourself a gatekeeper, Kenny King. So how about you and I have my first match back? Aldis challenges Kenny King. And King says, nah. <laughs> I respect it. I do too. Kenny's just like, yeah, I am yeah, I'm a gatekeeper, but you gotta work your way up to a match with me. So I guess it's an under siege, which is fine. Uh and then later on they're gonna announce Nick Aldis versus Sheldon Jean, which sounds honestly like a good match. I'm excited for that. But uh yeah, Nick Aldis, Kenny King. That sounds like a really good match. That's most likely gonna happen at under siege as we're building that card. What do you think of this segment with Nick Aldis? Uh was it was it hokey or did it hit the right tone to you? It was fine until you said the, the name of it was so listed. <laughs> it's not the real name of the segment, but we're going to stop calling it. I know, but that's what, that's all I'm going to remember. Like, like we started to call them aces of base. <laughs> that's all I'm going to the super brothers when they were like um, Matt Cardona. And uh, you know what I mean? That's how I'm going to get stuck in my head. Either way, I've never seen... Nick Aldis, Russell, only seen the clips of Brutus Magnus Russell. So it'd be interesting to see him wrestle against someone I've seen wrestle before who I perceive has a faster style than Aldis. It'd be nice to see him, you know, spread his wings, zip his toe in the water. And I'm always excited to see people who have an established history with impact. Me, for the first time, just coming in and seeing it with fresh eyes. It always makes me excited because the crowd is typically always very receptive to them. So I I don't want to go in there with any preconceived notions, but I feel like if the empath crowd loves you, you didn't do too bad when you was there the first time. Yeah, and you know what? I'm I am looking forward to seeing Nick Aldis return to Impact as a as an active wrestler. And I'm happy that they're not just jumping him to the front of the line. Uh-huh, I'm, me too. They're doing they're doing the, the baby face. They're, they're doing again. He's British Cody Rhodes. They're doing it exactly the same way. Like Cody coming to WWE, he's gonna have the big matches. He's gonna get the big title shot, and maybe he doesn't win. Maybe it really is the Cody story, but just you know, with a British accent. Please stop because. All I can hear is adrenaline in my soul, but with a British accent, and I'm a memer, and I'm trying very hard to be serious. <laughs> well, what's, cause, what's causing all this then? <laughs> adrenaline. 
MT. Stop it. You are doing this. You are baiting me. And I don't like this. I am easily baited. Very easily baited. Listen, there's enough there's enough unserious stuff going on in Impact. <laughs> but real quick, let's talk about Alicia Edwards versus Jody Threat. No surprise. Lish eats the pin. She loses to Jody Threat, who hits a pretty solid F416 again. So you know what? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it really was just that first opponent. And Jody's F416 looks good. Love seeing it. Uh, simple match, good back and forth action. I don't know if you have anything to add to it, but more than that, what's next for Jody Threat? She's got to start, you know, building her way up. Am I right? Agree with she's got to start building her way up, but I want to give props to Alicia for slapping the out of Jody Threat in the beginning of that match. Because my first note literally is Alicia is a going is Alicia's about to die. <laughs> And when she went up, I was like, mm, I'm not afraid. I'm like, hey, come on. That's that Eddie Edwards fight against PCO I like to see. And then she proceeded to die. So, you know, kudos to her. Um, in my hardest of hearts, and maybe it's the pink hair, her versus Killer Kelly. I'd like to see it. You know what? I'm down with it. I, listen, I know we've we've made the jokes in the past. The redheads make a trio. It's Masha and Killer Kelly and Jody Threats. Honestly, I don't want to see Killer Kelly. The return of Robo Joel live and in 4K. <laughs> Young man. Oh, he's back. Yay, we did it. <laughs> am, I, am I back again? No. Oh, your How audio is laggy to you. I said, Young man. <laughs> How about now? We're back. Okay, I see your lips moving, but the, the audio comes in after. How about now? There you go. You got All it. Right. Uh, my apologies, folks. I'm in a different space for this week, and I really want to talk about Trinity, so we're going to keep trying. Oh, man. We, you got this. We believe. Do we? Motor City Machine Guns are next with uh, with Gia Miller. I know we, we kind of moved past the Jody Threat stuff. I don't think there's anything else to add. Just She's got a yeah. lot of opponents ahead of her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a very simple match, and come on, we knew what it was. Sorry, Liz. Absolutely. I like you, but sorry. Listen, as long as they don't have to act, as long as they don't have to act on camera with each other. <laughs> like, Soon, it's coming. It's coming. It comes in time. Like, get those reps in. I'm totally down with that, but like, maybe not with Lish. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll just see machine guns over Gia Miller, and Gia points out that uh, Chris Saban pinned Trey Miguel last week, and then they put a little lower third saying that it's going to be Chris Saban and Trey Miguel for the exhibition championship at under siege. Uh -huh. Saban says motor city machine guns, always a team. They're greatest singles too. under siege is Saban's second favorite movie by Steven Seagal. His first favorite is under siege too, uh, which I know is Cresta's favorite as well. And then he says he's going to be a nine time exhibition champion and that's what he wants. And then Gia's like, well, what about you, Alex Shelley? And he's like, I'm gonna go win the world title. Period. <laughs> And there's, here's Orion Ben with the super chat saying, uh, I can see the promo. Cresta, 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 and Cresta. We turn to Joel. I'm going to go win the world title, I guess. Period. That makes sense. I mean, listen, I already have the Fightful World Heavyweight Championship. So what do I have to win? I it, It's it's someone's got to take it from me. And who's going to pin him? Nobody. Who's going to pin? Who's going to put Joel's shoulders down on the mat? Do you guys know he goes to Greek Town Wrestling every week and watches people every wrestle? Week. Listen, every I'm, I'm putting you over. I'm putting you over. It's every other month, maybe. I'm putting you over. He is a star. Okay. He's a star, damn it. You know what's gonna put me, you know, you know what's gonna get me under? It's the my internet connection. That's what's gonna send me to the mat. Tonight's internet reception. <laughs> He's got the hotel Johnny Swinger internet right now. <laughs> I, do. I do. I've got that Johnny Swinger. I was warned about this internet, but here we are. Uh Kazarian's part two ran on the show. I thought it was gonna run on socials. I don't know why it ran on the show, but then I realized that they were like five minutes early on the out, so uh -huh. I guess they had to run it. Uh Basically, they're just catching up to his AEW run, and then he puts over working in AEW. He mentions all the people he worked with in Impact Wrestling leading up to Ring of Honor and then going into AEW. And then he just says, you know, ultimately, I enjoy my time with AEW, but I wanted to bet on myself. And the future is in Impact Wrestling. This is fine. It's inoffensive. I don't know what we're doing with Kazarian. If we're building him to a world title shot like Cresta, what... What do you think about part two versus part one? Before I get into that, I will say that this episode I felt was very backstage promo heavy. I think there were like three, four matches on this card. And 
for me, for impact, that's that's a little low. They typically have five to six, but that's whatever. This, I don't hate it, considering the whole thing was very promo heavy. If there were more matches on the card, I would prefer that those matches get more time. But this was inoffensive to me. I like that if you are going to start it on the show, continue it on the show. I think what sucks the air out of it is having this and a Nick Aldis segment that's very similar about where you've come, why you've come back to Impact Wrestling. I would like that if all of this leads to Aldis versus Kazarian. I wouldn't hate that. That would be cute. Like a battle of the old icons, the old pillars of Impact. That would be great and nice. But I think at some point, both of these men are going to have to get on the mic with one another. I don't hate it. In this context of this show, I don't hate it. That is a great shout. I want to see Kaz and Aldis. I want to see them in a number one contendership match. That sounds good. That'd be really cute. They're really yeah. cute right before they get to Macklin. This way, both of them can build their own storylines that leads to a head, and all roads lead to Macklin. Yeah, and it really does feel like as <clears throat> as similar as these segments are for both men, mm -hmm. there's a, there's an opportunity to have them converge upon each other. Yeah, I like that. Maybe maybe that's where we go. We'll see. Uh, let's talk about Macklin singing Shira, taking it on PCO, Heath, and Rhino. No surprise that Heath and Rhino were the tag the, the tag partners for PCO. I was surprised. I really? did not guess that. My oh, first I... note was, please be crazy, Steve, and Black Taurus. It makes sense to my spooky fantasy. <laughs> nah, man. Had to be. Had to be it. It made no other sense than to be uh, Heath and Rhino. I mean, I didn't know who else, but again, that's just me. I'm a noob. I'm a novice. My middle name is Cresta Mark Star. <laughs> Mark is your middle name? I'm learning so yeah. much today. Yeah, some people call me Smark. Smark Mark Sterling? <laughs> is that I your have, name? I have a lawyer's degree. <laughs> In what? <laughs> Jabroninomics. Oh, sorry, Thugonomics. <laughs> oh, Jab oh, okay, just making sure. Yeah. I went to the same law school. Smart Mark Sterling went to, which um, Don Callis went to and Teddy Long went to. No further questions at this time. So they just made a match at Under Siege for the number one contendership for the, I am assuming, the Impact World Championship. It's going to be Moose. So there goes that tag title match I thought of. Eddie Edwards, John Gresham, Yuya Yumura, Alex Shelley, and Frankie Kazarian. That's not bad. I don't know. But how I feel not about Nick Aldis versus Frankie Kazarian. That doesn't make sense with what I just said, and I would like to be a soothsayer. Thank you. You could still do that match down yeah. the line. It's just, it's a very random match to make. I'm hoping that they tell a good story with it. But uh, Macklin Singh and Shira, PCO Heath and Ryan, PCO again looks big, looks good. That's what they want to do. Macklin spends most of the match not involved until the end when he gets Singh and Shira to put PCO in the tree of woe. PCO gets out of it. He uh, stands up to Macklin. Macklin retreats, gets gored by Rhino, of course. Ugh. And then Heath hits a big old wake-up call on Singh after Singh tries to bribe PCO again. So what does PCO do? And he hits a PCO salt, gets the second win in a row in the, in two weeks over Champagne Singh. Hit that deanimator on him again, too, for the second week in a row. My God, Ugh. poor Champagne Singh. Man, he can't, he can't buy himself a win, literally. I mean, he could. You have to learn to do Clearly finger, not. Finger poker doom. You trying to pay yourself. Oh, you better lie on that floor. Sometimes winning isn't all about the W in the in the W column. You know what I mean? Sometimes the L is a W in disguise. You mean a dollar sign in disguise. It could be. Robots okay. in disguise. I do like them. The third movie, not so much. Written. The original um, animated show. That was good. Yes. That was the best one. Unicron, played by Leonard Nimoy. I didn't know that, but I was also a child, but a youth. It was voiced by Leonard Nimoy. Was it voiced by Leonard Nimoy? Someone else has got to look that up. It was so, I forget who it was. I feel like we live in a time and age that someone in the chat will swiftly correct you. <laughs> Probably. I've been, <laughs> listen, man, I've been in transit. I was in transit with a baby today. You ever tried that one? You ever tried taking a four hour flight with a baby? That's a, that's I a, am the baby. I'm the one who's screaming on the <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. That's me. There was enough of that for me. Anyway, the coven is backstage. They're they're in their coven house, I guess. Where the coven lair. And Taylor Wilde's writing names on candles. Kylan King walks in and says, Oh, is this black magic? And Taylor's like, Well, true magic is neither black nor white. And I'm like, I don't think that's really true. And then uh, eventually this is all about Wilde 
saying that Diana Perrazzo and Jordan Grace are the names written on the candle. They're messing with fate, and that when the candle disappears, so will they. Uh, I didn't get this segment. Uh, I'm not, not going to hold you, Chief. Uh, well, they're doing that match next week. I I don't know how to respond. Like, I get it. Listen, there was there's a lot that I was expecting out of this little story that they're telling mm-hmm. with the knockout tag titles. This wasn't it. This wasn't what I was expecting. I didn't love this one. I think they're I think they're trying to do the spooky stuff and sometimes it hits, but lately the stuff with Taylor Wilde's not for me. And Kylan King being like, ooh, is this black magic? If we're eventually coming around back to the Rosemary Decay Jessica stuff, mm-hmm. then cool, let's get there. But whatever they're doing right now, just it's not working for me. It's giving Joel doesn't watch anime, but it's giving Death Note, but Death Candle. Uh, it, uh, I, I, what I want from it, and maybe I'm having expectations, and also it doesn't help <laughs> that in the Rosemary seg- in the Rosemary segment, Father Mitchell's like, they're not that powerful. It's kind of like, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> so that is the next segment. It's Father James Mitchell with the Death Dolls. And yeah, Mitchell's like, nah, couldn't be the coven. They don't have that power. I can walk through as I please. They can't stop me. And then he's like, hey, you want to you wanna come with me? And Jessica's like, yeah, we have to go. And Rosemary's like, no, no. What's in it for you? Exactly. Father James Mitchell, what do you want? And James, Father James Mitchell's just like, no, no, you have to come with me now. And we have to go now because I have I need a lot of time to think about it while I'm dealing with all of my whores. That, 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 that's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. That wasn't. That's not me. That's that's just not me. That's what he said. That doesn't sound like the undead realm. That's all like the swinger dungeons. It was Danny DeVito is what that was. <laughs> it's watching, watching, watching. It's always sunny. Anyway, uh, Rosemary says that Jessica still can't come to the undead realm, but gives her an hourglass and says, "By the time the sand runs out, they'll be back." Uh, how long do you think they're going to be gone, Father James Mitchell and Rosemary? To under siege, darling. <laughs> It's a long time. It's a whole month. I mean, that's two tapings. Palette. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> I'll also say this. She said that you were kidnapped by them before. When was she kidnapped by them before? With the with the hex? Jessica? Yeah. That was what made what transformed her into Jessica, I thought. Okay, but then why would Rosemary, who's been keeping it a secret, that she... Because I that's what I thought, too. I thought the first time that you got kidnapped, you were Havoc, and then you became Jessica. So then why would you say that's why you got kidnapped the first time if we're trying to keep it a secret that this is actually Havoc? So I was a little confused. I'm like, was she kidnapped another time? So... Yeah, I got to go back and watch this because I do not remember. This is one of those times where my brain is half asleep and I would need to redo the research. It's all good. I'm sure if Dirty Dango was here, he would have a thing to tell me I'm wrong and it was Johnny Bravo. Well, if you never want to be wrong, join us over at FightfulSelect.com. It's the best $5 in the business. Get your exclusive news. Get every piece of exclusive news coming to you at FightfulSelect.com. You want to know about all the stuff coming up to WWE Backlash in Puerto Rico this weekend. Go to FightfulSelect.com. If you want a really, really cool interview with Cheeseburger done by the one and only Rob and Maggie from Coexisting, FightfulSelect.com. Maybe you want a free edition of Ask Grapsity with Reg and Phil. Go to FightfulSelect.com. And maybe you're asking yourself right now, wait a minute, I thought it was Will, Phil, and Reg. Well, Fightful Select broke the news that Will Washington is now employed by AEW. Hey, hey good, for, good for Will. Good, good for, for Will. Will. Never had the pleasure of working with him, but I did enjoy his work. Good for him. Go go ahead, young man. Go ahead, young man. There you go. So there you go. FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business. There's tons of stuff. Sour Graps is there. The SRS Q&A. All the, uh, everything. Just go to FightfulSelect.com. And then we went up to talk about Speedball Mike Bailey versus Jonathan Gresham. Numero four. Four horsemen, aren't yeah, it? Yeah, thank you. It was four horsemen right there. Um, yeah, this match, listen, the match was good. There's never a question that these two are going to have the good moves. 
that started out really good in terms of storytelling because Gresham had the mustache and he had that kind of cocky look on his face. Like, yes, you know, like, oh, this guy again, like this will be a cakewalk. And then they do a lot of back and forth and they have a good match and there's a lot of strength testing, some, you know, shoving some. It's just a very even match. And like, that's great if this is the second time they're facing off, but this is the fourth. The double knee spice speedball from the top on Gresham, who was draped over the top rope. That stuff's disgusting and I love it. That's dirty. And then eventually Speedball goes for Ultima Weapon again. They tie up and then, uh, he sorry, Speedball misses the Ultima Weapon again. They tie up into a roll through. Gresham locks in the octopus and Speedball, he, he submits. That's it. So Gresham gets the win and then they shake hands again. And I'm sitting here saying, where's the story now? I wanted him to turn so bad. I was like, Joel was yeah. right. You've even got the, the one mustached woman to another mustached person. You're the the villain arc is right there. Right there. Right there. And you were even wrestling rude heel, if you will. I I wanna understand, but I do not. But I trust impact and I trust everyone in that situation. But at that point I was ready for Gresham to just be like, yo, I'm beating you up. <laughs> It seems we have lost Joel again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I also enjoyed him tapping out to that octopus stretch because I think having Speedball, I feel sometimes lose clean because he is on such a tear, really puts over the other person. Like, damn, you beat Speedball? Oh, wow. Not a lot of people do that. Joel, are you yeah. back? I'm here. Yay, we did it. Da, 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 da. And I filled for time successfully. Thank you for the vamp. I appreciate that. Sammy Callahan's backstage with uh, Rich Swan. By the way, I agree with everything that you said. I did hear quite a bit of it. Uh, there was there were some really good beats in that story, but it does it. We need to move forward. We need to do something yes. more with with Gresham. Speedball is speedball. That's fine, but like let's let's move away from number five match number five. So we'll see. Where I mean, goes. it was a conclusion because Trey Miguel did interrupt the last one. But again, I felt like there needed to be a little bit more spice and heat. Or if this is the end, then that's fine. Then let's let them go their separate ways for a bit and then maybe come back down the line. I don't want to see a five for no reason. Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, let's move on. Sammy's backstage. He wants Rich Swan to help him out. Mentions their history. Says the family doesn't always pick each other, but they stand together. And then Rich Swan is hesitant and he doesn't even want to think about it. But uh, Sammy walks away and he's just like, think about it. So... Sammy and Rich Swan, I'm fine with them teaming up. Let's just get somewhere with it. But otherwise, I don't have much to say to you. I agree with Swan. I don't know why you're asking me, buddy. I mean, I'm sorry, Sammy Callahan. You kind of screw. I, I, yeah, yeah, you're up there with people I don't trust. Kevin Owens, Charlotte Flair, Sammy Callahan. Sorry. Next week, we've got Scott Demore made Rhino versus Macklin for the Impact World Championship. We got the Kazarian interview part three. Nick Aldis takes on Sheldon Jean, Masha Slamovich versus Killer Kelly in a match that I thought was really good. And then the Coven takes on Jordan Grace and Deanna Perrazzo for the Knockouts Tag Titles. Yeah, that's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun episode next week to talk about. And I will be back home at my regular setup to talk about Aggressive Star. Period. I'm excited. Unless, you know, I uh, turn into dust and then I won't be here. Be you and somebody else. <laughs> Well, the excitement for our main event segment should probably turn you to dust. And that is the debut of trinity this was really good cresta it was th there was a little you know i'm here to make an impact and you know buttering up the knockouts division. you do that though you mm -hmm. do that if you're trinity and you're coming in and you've had people say why would you come here why wouldn't you go to w you know why didn't you go to aew why don't you go mm -hmm. here why don't you go there this is a great opportunity for a refresh in trinity's place and for Trinity to work on. She gets a huge reaction. She reintroduces herself. And then the crowd chants Trinity. And she's like, I like the sound of that. And I think it's wonderful. She puts over the knockouts division. She calls it the place to be for fierce competition. She mentions Awesome Kong. She talks about Gail Kim, Mickey James, Deanna Perrazzo, Jordan Grace. And, of course, if you talk about them, you got to bring out Deanna. But that's not before Trinity says that, you know, she's here to win championships. And that she is the brightest star in the galaxy. And she is ready to shine. So Deanna Prazo comes out and she says, hey, respect to you, but, you know, you you mentioned my name and I'm going to come out. Uh -huh. And uh, 
says if you you want to re- re- reiterate that if you make Im- if you want to make history, it starts with Impact Wrestling. And says if you get a shot at the Knockouts title, I love this. Deanna says if you want a shot at the Knockouts title, just remember that that's not something that you can just walk out on. Oof. And the crowd just ooh. And then Trinity, listen, she steps right back up and says, "Yeah, well, you know, remember what when you step into the ring with me, you'll wish you got fired again." Wolf. Good I stuff. love that. Love it. Little stuff like that makes me love these stories. Mm-hmm. It's not too inside baseball and it's not too it's not too catty. It's mm-hmm. just good, good witty repartee, if you will. I will say that as someone who's been following this whole situation from when they walked out, very excited for Mercedes Monet. I always hope to see Trinity Russell again, especially as someone who's only ever seen her in WWE and seeing how people come to impact and sometimes flesh out who their character is, become a different person, or you actually get to see them be them completely themselves. I am excited for what this is going to bring because I know what she's done only specifically in WWE. And before that, she was what in NXT. And then I think it was tough enough before that. So it's like, go ahead. I feel like oh, she, she, she did a little ring of honor as well. But other than that, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I would love to see it. And I know what this division gives. Even some of the lower card people are still stiff AF in the ring. They're still technical wrestlers. They're still X division material. So I'm very excited to see where Trinity fits in all of that. And her versus Diana, I think seeing what Trinity is going to do would be fantastic. Fantastic. Because it's putting people who have been, who have had their eyes on this whole situation now put their eyes on impact if you were a lapsed fan of impact and you're like i'm not watching that this sucks da, 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 da. now you're like okay but you got one half of a, the dynamic the talking point the dynamic duo of like 2023 2022 what are you gonna do like literally so i i am so excited i'm so happy for her and i'm so happy for impact as a whole this was a great get and their impact knockouts division is one of the strongest if not the strongest women's division and i'm saying that in representation wise match wise match time wise the the contents of the match like this is the place to be especially if you are a woman who wants to rebrand themselves i think this is fantastic i also really when she said you want to get fired again i was like oh you and the usos is in the mirror y'all was cutting it y'all was cutting each other oh i love it i love it i can't wait i cannot wait well, after she said that fired comment, out comes Jordan Grace. She reminds Diana Perrazzo that they have a rematch at Under Siege and then says to Trinity that if you came for a Knockouts World Championship shot, then you got to come find Jordan Grace because she's going to be winning that title at Under Siege. And then the crowd is chanting for a triple threat. And Trinity says she'll be waiting and watching. And whoever is left standing as champion at Under Siege will be hers. I'm really looking forward to trinity getting her feet wet in impact mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to the stories they can tell with her and that she will be a part of um i'm not going to spoil anything from the tapings but i think her first match uh not just her first match against kylan king that's well established but her first p um uh, specialty match her first um her first match on an impact special that's coming up mm-hmm. at under stage she will have a match that match is going to be so good and i'm so excited for it we'll talk about it when it airs on the show but uh, no, this was a great first night for Trinity. This is a great uh, reintroduction. And I think Impact did a pretty good job of hyping it all night. And even when she debuted live on Friday night in, in, in Chicago, they were good to say, Trinity's here and we're not going to hide it from you. Yeah. This is, this is what's going on. And you can see her live. You can see the actual, you know, proper footage on Thursday night on Impact. Good way to get crowds into the door i'm hoping people watch because there was some intrigue yeah absolutely i went out of my way to avoid spoilers because yes i saw some people who she's going to be coming up against but i want to watch impact you know what i mean i want to see it i also want to give respect to trinity saying i'll be sitting back and waiting because there's a big storyline there when jordan grace said i don't plan on losing to you for a fourth time i was like oh I felt that because Grace don't really lose like that. And to admit to know that Deanna Perazzo has had your number three times. Every time you go against Deanna, she's like, 
get out of here, Grace. And people, Masha Samovich, who was on a tear, didn't even do that to Jordan Grace. By the way, shout out to uh, Josiah Williams, we're wrestling flow for the new theme. For yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the things that I pride myself as a musician is the second I hear something, if I I can sometimes I can hear your production or I can tell it's your voice immediately. I heard it. And I'm like, that's a Josiah theme. That's that's a wrestle and flow. And then a few hours later, she's like, by the way, thanks to Josiah and wrestling. Flow. And I was like, yes. So really good stuff. I'm so excited. Again, Trinity and Impact is is a big opportunity for both sides. Again, this is a a reintroduction for Trinity. This is a, a revitalization project for her and for impact. This is an opportunity for them to say, Hey, we landed a huge star. We landed an opportunity to have a big knockouts acquisition, make an impact herself. There you go. Sorry. My, uh, my camera had a hard time and a stroke. My apologies. That's okay. I thought it was me. <laughs> no, that was me. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm very, very excited about the future of Impact Wrestling. And if Trinity is the catalyst to get more people to watch Impact Wrestling so we can all argue about our favorite wrestlers online, love it. I'm here for it. Again, I I think Impact Wrestling, and specifically the Knockouts division, is the place to be. You know, like if you really want to bet on yourself, like Frankie Kazarian's been saying since he came back, if you really want to bet on yourself, honestly, Impact Wrestling is a place to be because new eyes will open up to you. Fans of Impact Wrestling, I will say as someone who's new to the fandom, these guys, if they love you, they love you and they will mess with you to the end of time. And that's fantastic. And maybe more people will look at Impact and get the flowers and the respect it deserves. Impact is absolutely fantastic. If Impact was as bad as people say it was, you think they'd be able to get Trinity when she could go anywhere she wanted? And on top of that, Mercedes Monet just spent the last few months proving that she is a draw outside of WWE. Proving that she has value outside of WWE and that she deserves not just the opportunities, but also, let's face it, the money that comes with being a draw. Trinity now has that opportunity. So there is a bit of put up or shut up for her. Um, But again, Impact has been good about giving her ample opportunities to be the star of the show, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with this promo tonight and we'll see the the match against Kylan King next week. That, Or I guess maybe it's in two weeks, but either way. um, And I'm not, again, I'm not spoiling anything because... That's well established. That was a promoted match ahead of yeah. the tapings. So the match against Kylan King that's going to air not next week, but the week after that, uh, that's going to be another big opportunity for Impact to promote it and for Trinity to prove that she can bring it. So I'm looking forward to talking about Trinity for the summer, maybe longer. We'll see. Uh, but tonight, great way to kick off Trinity's Impact run. So I'm happy. If you're happy, we can get on out of here, Crested Star. Tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and ghouls, my name is Cresta Star. You can find me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on twitch.tv slash Cresta Star or tiktok.com at Cresta Star. I watch Monday Night Raw, Wednesday Night Dynamite, SmackDown on Fridays, followed by AEW Rampage. I don't show it on screen. I got to give the disclaimer. The Twitch and TikTok police will snatch me, and I don't got Sean Ross that money, period. Um, on Thursdays, I am here with Joe Pearl. We talk all things impact, and I have a great time with, guess what? You. So thank you so much for being here. When there's ever a premium live event or their pay-per-views, I'm also here with Joe Pearl. If I talked too fast, you're like, Cresta, I don't know what the hell you just said. Mosey on down to at Cresta the star on TikTok, TikTok on Twitter, link tree in the bio. Follow me on all forms of social media. See you there, bitch. I like the last part, especially the most. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, where can they find you? I'm easy to find. I am at Joel Pearl, J-O-E-L-P-A-R-L. Uh, Fightful Overbooked is where you find me most of the time, especially getting in the weeds with Jeremy Lambert, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I will not be on the show tomorrow or Friday. However, Brandon Thurston from WrestleNomics will be there, and SB3 from True Heel Heat will be hey. guest hosting. Go check that out because that's going to be a fun show for Friday. Don't know who's doing Monday yet, but I'm not going to be there anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends, be on the binary. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.